Hey guys, Nugs B here. Just wanted to take a moment to thank the sponsors of For the Record, and today I'm going to be thanking Advanta Clean of the Tri-State. They specialize in all industrial cleaning you would need for your home and commercial locations as well. Advanta Clean of the Tri-State provides essential indoor air quality services to residential and commercial customers. They uh, provide mold removal, water damage, dryer vent cleaning, and air duct cleaning. The owners of this great establishment are Pam and Joel Dooley. So if you want to slide on over to Facebook... If you're watching on Facebook, just go ahead and type it into the top of your search bar, AdvantaClean of the Tri-State. Or you can check them out on their website at www.AdvantaClean.com slash Ashland-KY. And like I said, that's ran by Pam and Joel Dooley. And if you need to call them, just give them a shout at 606 331 Five zero zero one, or if you want to stop in at their uh, location, it's four 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 six Thirteenth Street, Ashland KY. And like I said, these are great people, great friends of mine, and you guys definitely got to check them out if you have any issues with your home or your commercial location for your business or whatever it may be. So make sure to give them a call. Go over to their Facebook page, give them a like, share their page, and if possible, tell them Taylor sent you. I really appreciate it, guys. Let's go ahead and get this episode uh, started. Uh, it's for the record, son. Yeah. 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 It's for the. It's for the record. I said it's for the. It's for the record. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Nugs B, joined by Mr. Kevin Stepp. How are you doing today, sir? I'm timing my drink of water perfectly <laughs> is what I'm doing. I'm doing well. It's a little doing hot well. out there today. I'm not going to lie. It's, uh, mm-hmm. it's been a little warm the past couple of days. I'm not really liking it. I think it's, I'm ready for the fall time. It's summer. It is summer. Ru- People were complaining about summer not getting here. They're like, this is true. oh, we haven't had any summer. <laughs> Look around. Look around. Summer has walked through, kicked your door open, gone, Hattie, <laughs> I'm going to stay a while. We're going to stay a while. Is, I mean, you got to think, we didn't even have a winter last year. I mean, I don't even remember Well, well the thing is, hitting. people forget every season. Literally. Until, just... uh, they keep going back, the blizzard of 78. <laughs> Good Lord, do you realize how long ago that was now? Long time, 22, my friend. 20, that's 41 yeah. years ago. That's, yeah. the, that's the winter I remember. <laughs> You're 12. <laughs> How can you remember a 41 you year old? You remember winner? fighting. That's all you remember with snowballs. That's all you remember. You don't remember yeah. anything. <laughs> and you get hit in the eye. You could have hurt somebody. Yeah, so this is episode yeah. 32 of For the Record. Like I said, joined by the magical Mr. Kevin Stepp, a Paul G. Blazer teacher of uh, English literature, you already know. And we're going to start the day off, as usual, with entertainment history. So. August 8th, 1984, the Prince album Purple Rain, which also serves as a soundtrack to the film of the same name, hits number one in the U.S., where it stays for an amazing 22 weeks, man. Gosh, how cool was Prince? You had to have some confidence to get up there with some platform boots. 5'2". 5'2", you- <laughs> platforms. Literally. That's this just, guy was killing that's it. That's just and, getting up to normal people. Oh, high. he was dancing in high heels. It was a glorious moment. It really was, man. Uh, God, RIP he, to him. He uh, he appeared at the uh, Grammys later mm-hmm. that year, won a bunch of awards for Purple Rain. Yeah. But uh, maybe it wasn't even Purple Rain, one of the albums. He'd gotten the Grammy for, and he walked up, and he's in this French Renaissance suit. Like, yeah, I want to thank God <laughs> for the support. Now, thank you, everybody. So, and the thing is, my kids at school are like, my mom likes Prince now because he thanked God. He he was all pretty. Uh, have you played <laughs> Darling Nikki for them? Yeah. Have you played Darling Nikki for your mom yet? 
Why would I, I do that? I love Prince, man. I've always been a huge hey. fan. I always thought the movie was real cool, even though it's kind of corny. <laughs> I, I, I liked it, you know. I, I was a it's, fan. It's a rock star movie. Straight up, it's it really straight is. Straight up rock star movie. So great. And it's crazy that, like, he came out and said he was bisexual. And, you know, well, actually, I, he, actually he, he explicitly said he was homosexual, actually. I did not know that. Yeah, he came out and said he was homosexually, like, and he was still, girls were just still in love with him. I'm it didn't matter. It was Sheila E. Like, <laughs> But girls still loved him, though. It didn't yeah. matter, you know? Like, well, he could come out and it, say that he was homosexual, and people would still just, l- like, girls would want him more, it seemed like, you know? Like, it's it's weird. It's weird how that stuff like that works. When you have that type of, you know, stardom with you, you literally can just do whatever you want. You can <laughs> say whatever you want. Do whatever, and people will still worship the ground uh, you walk the on. The most dangerous thing in the world. So crazy. It really is. It's crazy how much, you know... We, we build these people up to be like gods, you know? Like, it's really how it is, and that's how we we view them. They we, are – celebrity is the American royalty. It really is. Um, it truly there's, is. There's – you know, it, we have said we're not a cl- – we're a classless society, which economically in all kinds of ways is not true, but our our royalty is celebrity. Yeah. And so we just – It really is. Roll with them. It's crazy because, I mean, that's a great comparison. We don't have a royal family. We have celebrities. We have – Literally. Them. Well – what royal family do Kennedys, we have in America? Have well, the Kennedys, yeah, the true, Bushes, true, true. Clintons, uh, uh, yeah, well, to an extent. The, Clint, uh, the thing is, they only had Chelsea, and she's no that's, longer Clinton. That's true. So. That's true. That's <laughs> but true. But it wasn't from Bill Trump. Not Trump. <laughs> no. I'm he tried sorry. His best. He tried that his was best. probably <laughs> probably not true. Allegedly. <laughs> I don't, uh, allegedly. I'm not even alleging anything. I made a cheap <laughs> shot. Sorry. Oh, that's funny. But yeah, that's that's a great if point, though, man. What I'm saying this would be recorded. Um, so next thing is, on August 8th, 1958, Bobby Darren has his first hit as Splish Splash reaches number three in America. The song is later used on Sesame Street as a way to encourage t- uh, kids to get in the tub. And if you don't know what the song is, go look it up. Every time I hear it, I always think of Air Bud. The first one. The original Air Bud. And then when, when he's like tr- trying to wash him and stuff, mm-hmm. every single time I always think of that, dude, as soon as I hear that song. You know, I miss the entire Air Bud arc. I really? Not haven't watched any of them. Any of the earbuds. After three, it was awful. Because it was like <laughs> it was like it was like basketball. And then I think it the was first, football. The first three. <laughs> and then you, soccer. It, it, the dog held oh, your heart. He, oh, oh, he, okay. he held a dear okay. part in my okay. heart. And I was blessed to watch That's such a awesome. such a great theatrical awesome. event happen with an with an animal, you know? Right. And then it was like, nah, we're just we're done. We're not gonna care about yeah. this anymore. See, so, yeah, now I feel low so bad, budget. Because it's like I miss the in- I miss the entire career of Weezer. Nice. And the entire career of Oasis. I have no idea who these people are. I'm not really a big fan of Oasis. I think they're overrated, in my opinion. But Weezer are great, in my opinion. I love Weezer. I think they're really, really good. They were having a reunion concert. I didn't know they were a band. Really? Like... You've definitely heard some of their songs, though. I'm sure I have. Definitely. They're I'm one of sure those. I you know, have. it's like you hear, like, once you hear the song, you're like, oh, yeah, I know who those guys are, but you don't know their names. No. You, nobody no. really knows their names. It's like Katrina and the Waves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're walking on sunshine, but nobody knows. Who nobody are. knows. Yeah. August 8th, 1970, The Doors' Jim Morrison is arrested in Los Angeles for public drunkenness after being found lying unconscious on a resident's doorstep. RIP to uh, Jim Morrison. Another uh, fun fact of the day: I don't like the Doors that much. I know that's a, that's another that's an unpopular opinion. I Never really it, been a big I don't, fan. I don't know who it's unpopular with. They were so contrived. Yeah. I, the thing is that all of the guys in the back, Manzarek and all the guys in the group, were told you're going to wear a suit. Yeah. And you're going to stand still. I didn't even know that. To make Jim look more weird. Wow. Yeah, it was all a contrivance. Didn't even know that. To the Lizard King thing, mm-hmm. all of that was a marketing thing. Wow. It, yeah. Just image. Yeah. And that, that's crazy. You know, and the thing is, uh, the to me, the biggest contribution, Jim Morrison, and this is for those of you who love Jim Morrison. <laughs> And you're Don't all cry. you're all my Don't write age. Us, you're like, all my age. Hate speech, so, you know. Yeah. Um the biggest contribution he did is at twenty seven he finished the Janice yeah. Jimmy triad. Forever twenty seven. People who, who passed at twenty seven. Was he the last one? Or was of it that Cobain? group, of that group, I think Kirk- of that group. No, Cobain was a generation later. You're right. You're right. But see, of, the, right. of, that, of that the people, group. you're in absolutely that right. Time. Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, and, Jim and, Morrison, and, and yeah. then the last one was Kurt Cobain. You well, were absolutely and I right. don't even know how, much, how old Amy was when she passed. 
I don't know. She was. She might have been a twenty-seven. Amy Winehouse, dude. That that album was it. Back to Black. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. album. Oh my god, it was phenomenal. That it's, raw power that she the, had. The the th- the fact is that spectacular. There are people who just have gifts. Love her. And the gifts that they have, and it, I think it comes back to something we were talking about before yeah. we went on air that. People giving them giving somebody structure and help in finding out that your gift is not a trap. Sure, but see yeah. if you start getting used by a lot of other things for other <coughs> purposes, it becomes a problem. And uh, I don't know if you watched the video; uh, it's on Facebook and YouTube and stuff. But it's like uh, she's like sitting. At, it looks like maybe a hotel or something, mm-hmm. and she's singing. And like it was a it was a part where mm-hmm. of her life or whatever, where I think it was her dad or her brother or somebody was like, "Hey, you know, like this is how you sound when you're sober." You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like and, and like mm-hmm. you can tell she was real like fidgety and kinda just mm-hmm. like, you know, she was she was probably withdrawing from alcohol and drugs, mm-hmm. you know? And like she was kinda just like I said, you can tell. But her voice sounded mm-hmm. so good, yeah. like so just raw power. That's the only way to explain her voice is just pure power and just raw talent. Nineteen eighty five, eighty eight, something like that. Mm-hmm. I had just I was in my first teaching job. Oh wow. Where was and that at? Uh, it was a little school in uh, Fairfield County, Ohio, okay. called Liberty Union Thurston High School. A High four, school job was the first one you had. Four hundred kids, nine to twelve. Wow. I mean, very small. Pretty small. Very yeah, small that's school. That's pretty small. Uh, and you know, and I had I had the sophomore class. Yeah, that was my the gig. sophomore. That's a weird time all. for everybody. I had them all. It's a weird time so, for everybody, you know. But uh, I went home one Saturday, and I well, I'd been out <coughs> playing golf with a friend. I came home. And turn on the television, and uh, HBO had a special, mm-hmm. The Lost Tapes of Elvis Presley. Oh, wow. And so it was two hours of footage that was shot for his 68 comeback special that never went on air. Oh, wow. The special went on air. Yeah. And they had different parts cut out so that you saw him in the black leather suit. You saw him playing... With his original band, you yeah. saw all this stuff, but before the downfall, yeah, yeah, this is the the the, the comeback special was sixty eight. Okay, so that he had, you know, he was still Elvis the King, yeah, that yeah. Kind of stuff. But they went on for two hours, and I'm not, you know, he had passed in seventy seven. He you died know, in 1977. 1977. Oh, my God. I think Bob Marley 40, died in, like, 74 or 73. 42 years, 42 years old. Something 70, like 1977, that. 1975. I mean, Elvis was... You know, there's, there's, and I, I just, I, I can't turn past an Elvis movie. I just mm-hmm. can't. Loved Elvis movies, all that stuff. But here he is on this broadcast, this this thing HBO's found. Yeah. And I'm watching this for two hours, and I know he's dead. I know that Elvis is gone. I know this. But the raw power, the raw beauty of that voice, <coughs> at the end, it just goes black, and it comes up Elvis Aaron Presley, 1935, yeah. 1960s. And I broke into tears. Wow. I could not, I had never before to that moment understood the depth of the loss that, and, and some people had that this past week when Toni Morrison passed away, yeah. the author. Um, for me, it was Ray Bradbury. For me, it was some of these other guys. Sure. Toni Morrison, beautiful writer, yeah. tremendous voice. Uh, but, uh, you know, when we lose those, sometimes we don't take the time to appreciate See, here's the thing with me. I'm going to be completely honest right now. I'm not a big Elvis fan, but I do respect what he did. Sure. And, like, my dad loved him, you know, mm-hmm. and, like, I feel like pretty much every guy over the age of 40 loves Elvis. Like, that's just kind of how it is. Like, they, I don't know too many people who don't like him. Who well, the thing the is, we do, 40, you know? we, have like, this, we have this kind of love-hate with him because, yeah. you know, he hated the movies. It's, yeah. it's documented in his, uh, the people who wrote about him. That he was manipulated and used by Colonel Tom Parker. Really? And he was, yeah, he was never, he didn't want to do all that stuff. And so crazy. it contributed a lot. That's how There's, it goes, though, man. That behind the scenes, it gets scary. That's why all these people are depressed, man. Everybody's well, they, killing they themselves. Drink, and drinking drugs drinking follows the, up. Yeah. Like, and, but at the same time, you have to wonder, when do you, you know, he went through so much stuff to become... Elvis had a big influence. Oh, absolutely. Huge influence. That's why I respect him, you know. You still see it. I mean, you go back, even something as recent, and this is recent to me because I'm old. Brian Setzer. I don't know who that is. Oh, okay. Rockabilly. That's that's, that's one of my lists. I got a list here that I'm going to make of all things we talk about. The Brian Setzer Orchestra. Yeah. 
It's a rockabilly band, nice. and he uh, he big pompadours, yeah, big slap bass, yeah, the whole night big Les Paul guitars. Awesome. I love yeah. the, I, I love upright bass, yeah, man. man. It's so funky. Yeah. I got a band for you that you have to check out: Pigeons Playing Ping Pong. Craziest name. They're it's, a jam I band. I saw I saw somebody put one of their videos on Dude, the other day. They oh, are awesome. While while we're here, I'll recommend two bands. Yeah. Actually, three bands. Absolutely, it's for the uh, record, one, baby. One you already know because you've 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 given him props online. Yeah, uh, I did not know him that well. I've become a big fan also please because say, one of our Gary teachers, Clark Jr. Please say what? Gary Clark because oh. <laughs> he's awesome too. Well, Gary, he, Clark Jr. Gary Clark is Jr. Great. Jr. Gary Clark Jr. Love is that guy. Phenomenal. So good, but not one of the three. Yeah, um, but his, his the bass player in this guy's band sure is married to our orchestra teacher Everett Blazer. Oh gosh, Tyler Childers. Oh, You've been dude. giving big props to Tyler. I literally look, man. This this is crazy. I'm gonna go ahead and be 100 honest. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you all right now. I did not You're like Tyler for Childers. the record. For the record. <laughs> for the record, baby. Hashtag together FTR. So I was not a Tyler Childers fan. I was. You, you I didn't made like that him. clear. In a, in I a did post not recently. like him at all. I was against him simply from the fact. The only thing I really had to say about him was that I'm so glad that somebody from Kentucky made it. Yeah. He's from Lawrence County. He's right. from 20 minutes away, 30 minutes right. away, dude. So, like, I don't know exactly where he's from, Webville or Louisa mm-hmm. or whatever part, mm-hmm. but right before you get to Pike County, <clears throat> that's where he's from. Right. Super big props. He was just on Jimmy Fallon last night. Mm-hmm. Listen to Country Squire. Dude's got me hooked. I mean, I'm a believer. Like, right. he he got me. He won me. After the, the second song, Bus Route, dude, whew, that was a good song, man. Yeah. And it was, it was personable because I rode the bus when I was in elementary mm-hmm. school. Mm-hmm. Not in middle school or not in high school, but when I was in elementary school, like I remember having bus drivers and like they were they were kind of like roughnecks. I feel like they were kind of like hard guys, you know. And he talks about one of his bus right. drivers. He remembers. I'm gonna assume in elementary school he was talking about a young pretty girl, you know. So I'm, I'm gonna assume it was in middle, you know, middle school or elementary. And like the story behind bus route, like I was reading the lyrics and I was like, man, that is just so cool. This guy's keeping it authentic. Mm-hmm. His ex- he's writing off his experience. Right. Like I think that's right. so cool, man. But that is insane. I did not know that. Fun fact for the day, my friends. Yeah, so that is awesome. So that's one. Another one great. is um, a group that formed. They're from Boston. Yeah. Uh, personal, personal favorite band, uh, and their name just went out of my head. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> that's stupid. <laughs> um, Lake Street Dive. Okay. Lake Street Dive. Uh, all four of them are. Is uh, a female vocalist in that? Yes. I have heard she these guys. Is, I've heard these guys. They're she is good. Amazing. They are good. Four people. Bass player. Uh, Lake Street dri- Dive. Lake Street Dive. Lake Street Dive. Go check bass, those guys out because they player, are pretty sweet. Bass player, trumpet, guitar. I love horns. Player. I love horns. One man, guy so playing cool. trumpet, guitar, different parts of the song. Drummer, and then the vocalist, and she could sing the phone book, and it sounded good. That's, that's uh, true. Uh, and now, it. and this good. is a little personal family props thing. Yeah. Uh, no one's going to know how to spell this band. Oh, you holos. Oh, I could it's, not even it's begin my, to my, spell my that. It's my brother's band. Yeah, sure. O H O H O Y O L O S. I'll put they're it in on, the description. They're, uh, they're in there. Yeah, you I'll put get, it on the description. They just dropped an EP online. Absolutely. Um, very get the Amer- link for it, and Amer- I'll put it in the description It's Americana well. music. It's, That's awesome. Um, really, and and it's uh, it comes from people. He and got together these folks. They all. Uh, Share their faith; they're all believers, and nice. but it's not necessarily, uh, it's not a Christian record or yeah. a gospel record, but it's folks. It's really Americana music. Ben plays banjo and sings lead on a I number of the banjo, songs. Banjo, dude, God, um, I love it. Love and they're 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 really they're really cool people, and then awesome. they just uh, they they they're having a video release. Uh, party Saturday. Sweet, man. So you'll be seeing some video. From yeah, like I said, line. just uh, hit me I'll, with all the info. I'll drop, you the stuff. I'll drop it in the description so all these mm-hmm. guys can check it out. Cool. You know, uh, sounds great, man. I'll definitely yep. check it out myself, too. Yep. And like I said, uh, Lake, what was it? Lake Street Dive. Lake Street Dive, yes. man. I got to get those guys in my playlist because I've heard them before. They're really good. To, one of the most fun things they did uh, that really hooked me to them mm-hmm. is they did a cover of Michael Jackson's Want You Back. That's awesome. They did another That's cover of the co- another cover of uh, "Rich Girl" by nice. Hall and Oates. Oh God! And they've oh got a God. ton. Darryl they've Hall. got a ton of originals. Hall Oates. Got a ton of originals. Are out They're gonna there. be in Huntington. You know that? Lake Street is? No, Hall, Hall and Oates. Oh, 
I, that's right. They're coming to Huntington, that. dude. I ha- or it might be Charleston, maybe. It's probably Charleston. I think it might be Charleston, yeah. actually. My bad. Sorry about that. But it's in West Virginia. I need to Which go to is this almost concert. the same thing. Yeah, it's right there. It's not too far <laughs> away, you know. Um, but I seriously do. I need to go see those guys. One of my friends, uh, when I, I just got married a little over a year ago. Congrats, and by the way, my you. friend. Congrats. Thank you. Uh, just got married, and one of my friends was supposed to be in charge of a bachelor party. Yeah. Now, we had all kinds of people in the group. Oh, yeah. And he goes, and my friend says, listen, we're all coming from out of town. Let's just figure something to go do, and we'll do that. Yeah. And that'll be our party. I said, that's fine. Sure. Whatever. So he said, well, let's go to a baseball game. We'll go to a Huntington nice. Power baseball game. Or the West Virginia Power. He called it the Huntington Power. Yeah. What he didn't realize when he looked it up, he said he typed Huntington, West Virginia, things to do. Yeah. And it said West Virginia Power. Yeah. Well, they play in Charleston. I didn't know that. Not Huntington. I didn't know that. They'll, they might play a couple games a year. Sure. But mainly the, the game they were playing that night was Charleston, Primarily which is another hour. Oh, it's about an hour from here. Another hour beyond yeah. Huntington. Yeah, well, so, around about, yeah, about an hour yeah. and 20 minutes. Good so, call. Something like that. So we're like, um, well, the rehearsal would have to get done an hour earlier. Mm-hmm. That's not going to happen. <laughs> so we didn't do it. Yeah. But it was like one of those things like everybody's like, West Virginia. Yeah. It's got one area code. <laughs> it's one place. They don't have yeah, Charleston's area. actually a good little drive, man. Like, yeah. Depending yeah. on where you go, it's 45 minutes to an hour and 20. But you pass some of the best named towns in the country. Yeah. Nitro. Nitro. Hurricane. Hurricane. <laughs> not Hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> and they have a town called Tornado, <laughs> oh and you pronounce God. it Tornado. Hurricane. Why is there Why is there no ain on uh, that man? It's uh, crazy. West Virginia. West Virginia, baby. Uh, it's almost heaven. <laughs> Little piece of heaven goes with you. It's almost heaven. <laughs> so uh, I got some facts of the day, my friends. Two cool. percent uh, of the water on Earth is glacier ice at the North and South Poles. The ice is fresh water and could be melted. However, it is too far away from where people live to be usable. Less than one percent of all water on Earth is fresh water that we can actually use. I thought that was super cool. Which means that global warming is good. Yeah. It's it's bringing us more fresh water. (laughs) It's bringing us what we need. Al Gore was wrong, guys. No, it's an inconvenient (laughs) truth. We need more water. Yeah, but in all actuality, for those who don't know what sarcasm is, uh, climate change is a real thing that is is terrifying. Sure. Terrifying. And they say, I don't know if you've watched Before the Flood, it was a no. documentary with Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, oh well, then, now I'm I'm in now. It's good. It's it, it's okay. about him and his uh, you know his activism I and like, environmental. You I know, like almost anything Leonard does. Leonard, I love him. He's so great. Shout out to the Titanic. R.I.P. Jack. Now, but anyways, uh, before the flood, Netflix documentary, super great. Um, he goes at one part and talks to Elon Musk, which is our savior. You know, let's, let's pray to Elon Musk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, realistically, Elon, though... Elon is another capitalist. That, That's all Elon is. You think he's so? He's a lovely man, but you he's... You think so? I, I think anyone... I think he has good intentions. Oh, gosh. I think he has great I intentions. I don't think anyone starts out to be the, the monster they become. You're absolutely right. Hitler had friends. Yeah. Hitler actually... There was a note one day on the table in yeah. a little house in Austria... Gone to Hitler's. Wow. <laughs> because his friends would come over true. and they would play. He had, I mean, he, this is real. When he died, he had a girlfriend. Yeah, he did. Yeah, and some of the guys are still out here single, man. What are y'all doing? Come on, he's now. Like, Hitler, he's Hitler like, had a girl. Come on, now. You and t- but there are people who, to that, and, and not that he. You could be right. Not that you he could was, be right. Not that he was not a madman. Yeah. People often say, "What would happen if he'd gotten into art school? We yeah. would just had really bad sculptures." Yeah. <laughs> if somebody could just told him, "Hey, buddy, you're not doing too well, but you could do a little bit better. Just give him constructive criticism. We'd have an artist." By Hitler. No, I'm just kidding. His art was awful, bro. It was, it was real bad. It was, it was garbage. I don't think his politics but were much better. here's the thing that I will say about Hitler while we're on that topic. Yes, please. The, 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 do you know the way he started the Nazi party was literally just going to pubs and bars and talking to people? He started talking to these people, mm-hmm. getting them all amped up about you know this crazy ideology he had that was redonkulous, obviously. People but are, they people clung like, to him. People they like wanted you him. are not making it. Yeah, people they, like you are not making yeah, it. It's straight that up. group's fault. Socialist. It's that group's the, fault. The, the, the machine is what we have to feed the machine, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, long story short, for those of you who don't know, um, 
This guy was just talking in pubs to all these random guys, and all of a sudden, boom, they're killing all the politicians. They rushed the Capitol. I mean, they took over their country literally Mm -hmm. just by one man going out and talking. So Mm -hmm. that's all it takes. When it comes down to, like, true, like, crazy things happening, all it takes is one guy not, I mean, I guess getting the love he deserved at home. I don't know what it was. I thought he came from a good family. That's what, you know, I, I don't know what's going on, <laughs> well, Hitler, he, you poor fella. He didn't, he didn't, you know, his family was fine. I thought they were they regular were, people. They, they were. You know? They were They were Jewish. Yeah, well, I think. His mom was I Jewish think his, or something His mother like had, her, had, had Jew, Jewish, Jewish family. Heritage. Yeah. Yeah, but the the notion of, and, and this is where people get crazy about, and this is one of my pet peeves is yeah. slacktivism. Where, Slacktivism. Where people Drop that for they, me. I don't know people, what that means. Well, for the record. For the record. Hashtag Slacktiv- together FTR. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, um, slacktivism is what people do now who think they're doing something when all they're doing is clicking. For example, we recently had these murders so it's kind of self-explanatory not to interrupt no 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 no. take place the the murders took place in el paso and in dayton yep and people are like dayton strong click i stand with dayton click do you that's a great reference and a great point because you're absolutely right you're not doing anything nothing you're not doing anything here's the thing that same person click i stand with dayton okay fine now go find that friend of yours yeah. Who is hurting? Who is they struggling? Lost somebody no, they're just in struggling. The or they're, well, no, no, no. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that that young man. Yeah. Well, the young men. Oh, you're in talking about place, talk to your friends and make sure everybody's okay. Go find out that they're okay. And when call, they have those feelings. Yeah. Good perspective. When they have those angers. This is true. You go to them and they you say, "Listen, you can't do this." Yeah. And if they will not give up that plan, you turn to somebody and go. He's going to kill people. Absolutely. See and something, say something. You're right. There would have been another bombing you're absolutely in Times right. Square. There would have been a bombing in Times Square shortly after 9-11. Mm-hmm. But there was a, a man selling newspapers. He had a license in, in New York. Yeah. You have, if you, in New York City, you can get licenses to sell things on an individual basis. Like, like peddler, cigarettes. Like peddler's license like or something you can, like that, yeah, pretty yeah, much. And you can have Food a pack of cigarettes. Or, you yeah. can sell an individual cigarette for two bucks. Wow. I mean, you can't... You, in New York? In like New York City. New York City? Big okay, cities. Okay, okay, big okay. cities have these things. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, That's it's, crazy. it's what caused one guy to get tackled, is that he was selling unlicensed cigarettes. It's wow. beside the point. Anyway, this guy was selling newspapers. Yeah. And he saw a car that had been... Somebody had driven it up there. Rolled to the windows, left the car, and he saw something. I, I, he saw something coming out of the car. I think he saw smoke or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so he called somebody, uh, called a policeman over. They got in the car. There was like 500 pounds of ammonium nitrate. It wow. was a bomb in a car. Oh and my what had gosh. happened was that the, whoever left the car there had called a cell phone yeah. that was in the car yeah. and it had initiated a sequence. It hadn't it moved like, it far like enough. It was going to, yeah, it was starting to ignite it, wow. and it had takes a while to get get going. Sure. If this man hadn't said anything, oh my goodness! But see, you see something, you say something. Now that's this the exact true. opposite of y'all who are afraid of getting stitches. <laughs> Here's now my there's thing. a song about getting stitches, and everybody's <laughs> like, "Yeah, I want stitches." <laughs> Here's my let's let's go back to the slacktivism, which yeah. is a great self-explanatory word that I should have. Should have thought that's a great word though. Uh, and what I'm going to say about it is, you are absolutely right. I'm going to agree with you 100. percent But there is a but there. Think about the people who are out here who do have big followings that can spread a lot of great knowledge oh, to people. Oh, but you're talking about average Joe. No, I'm talking about we're talking, talking about, about somebody who not, regular, like me and you, regular people that don't well, have a hundred million followers or something crazy like that. Here's the thing. You know, we all have followers. Yeah, sure. Not everybody. just and not just technical followers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's being watched by someone. Oh yeah. And parents get this because. As we were talking earlier, Mm -hmm. your children, they don't know anything about Taylor. No. They know know daddy. They know dad. Dad is the the one I follow. And then they're going to see what dad says is cool. You're absolutely right. And they're going to go, aha, I'm good with that. Yep. 
and I'm good with this. Which is why it's a gr- it, it really that, that, that's, that's a the, real that's, great example. Dude. That's really the is. influence that we have. There's our followers. It really now, is. You're right. If you're gonna click, uh, a, 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 I support Dayton or sure. I am Charlie Abdo, whatever. Yeah. We pray for Paris. Yeah. And you do it, but you're not a person of prayer. You're a poser. This is true. Now let me let me go ahead and put some light on that because I'm not gonna lie. I'm not the one that goes and says like, "Oh yeah, I I'm I'm praying for Dayton okay. or I'm doing yeah. that." But I'm gonna say I'm gonna go out here and it depends on the situation. And if I am knowledgeable about it, I'll be like, "Hey, if you're a person of prayer or if you like to send good energy, maybe you could do that for this person." Sure. You know, like that's I like I, I I like to make people aware of things, but I get where you're saying where it's kind of like you need to just go help people, whether it be with mental illness or maybe you need to actually go out and, and do activism and see, because that's what it is. I'm not know? really talking. Like, I'm not, not really. Again, if you click it because you genuinely have an empathy toward those people and you yes. want to do something in your, you know, you can think globally, yes. but act locally. Yes. And that's what I wanted to clarify because some yeah. people probably didn't get what we were getting at. You know what I mean? Like to, to clarify for, for the, the record, record you hashtag know, <laughs> together FTR, baby. So, you know, I want to clarify for yeah. some people because some people might, you know, be like, oh, I don't well. want to offend or trigger anyone. <laughs> Hashtag. I don't, I don't even care about offending it, people. Keeping it reals one hundred. <laughs> I don't even care about offending people. I just want people to know. Sure, and then that's the thing. I when you when you act locally, yeah, and when you're thinking globally, I, I want to make the world a better place. Well, you don't have to go to the Sudan. You don't have to go no. to this. You, you can make here. your house community. your community. Better. Yes, and and the thing is, I, I deal with people community all the time. Community starts at the home. Well, you know, it's like, like you know, and you and I've talked because. We went through, if I could put it this way, we went through high school together. Of course we did. Um, no, I had this man two years of the four years yeah, I went to high school. It was a blessed time, honestly. And, and here's the deal, though. How I, how I Every year, I have all these people, uh, I got a plan. Do you? Yeah. We're going to get out of this town. There's <laughs> nothing to do here. I can't get ahead here. I can't do it. I got to go to Lexington. Fire at peak skin, or boy. I got to go to... Pikeville. Yeah. Well, I gotta go somewhere. I gotta get out Global. of here. Gotta get out of here. <laughs> well, why, Georgetown. Why, why? Why do you want to get out of here? I, I, I'm not happy. I said, oh, okay. Happiness comes from well, your well, environment. Here's, oh, here's yeah. the, no, here's the thing. Sarcasm. Insert. You're going to yeah. Please <laughs> hashtag hashtag. So he, he the, um, it's a boy or a girl, whatever. And I said, yeah. so who's going with you? Oh, uh, me and my friends. Do your friends make you happy? Yeah. What happens when they leave? Why would they leave? I'm not because happy. people will leave. People leave. And the problem is you're taking your biggest problem with you. Yeah. Because if you are not happy inside of you. I was about to say the exact same thing, my friend. The exact because, same thing. Because contentment, which is actually the next step. Happiness is fleeting. True. Happiness is transitory. It's transient. This is true. It's temporary. You can be happy because your sandwich was delightful. I am very happy when my sandwich is delightful. However, I get thrilled. Here's the thing. And this goes this is a sidebar to this. Sure. You can have the greatest meal in the world. Oh yeah. And if you're in the wrong company, you will not be happy. This is very true. And the next thing I was going to say uh, to add to that really is like it's kind of like with relationships as well. If one person is not happy, with themselves, no, okay. your relationship will never be happy. Even, it goes mm-hmm. to friends, not even like right. you know. Oh yeah. You know, not like a, a like a uh, you know significant other. Like no. it could just be like you and I are friends. If you are not mentally and physically happy with yourself, we're not going to be able to vibe. We're not going to be able to hang out and have a good time because you're you're sad. But it goes back to what we were saying about checking on your friends, mm-hmm. making sure. You know, we were just talking about you know. My best friend Dustin, you know, like mm-hmm. I call that dude and check up on him just because I feel like that's what friendship's about. If I call you and check up on you, you know that you're in my circle. You are in my corner. And that's I love thing. you dearly, you know. I can tell people. I can say I can say to Katie, my wife, I can say, Katie, I love you. Yeah. But if I don't come home, I don't call her. Yeah, you don't check, check in. Check in. You know, she's she works really hard. Yeah. But if I'm just like uh, yeah. I love you. Yeah, but I'm not I guess. putting actions. Yeah, to the words. You gotta show There's, somebody you love them. 
Yes, show somebody you care. Words matter. They, but I mean, also, actions speak louder. Yes, they do. Words do matter. You're absolutely right. You do need, some people need reassurance of well, how great also, you feel about them. Everyone, you know? everyone has that I'm moment. like that. Everyone you know, has I need, that I moment. Some, I'm remember. emotional. You can remember a word mm-hmm. that hurt you. Yeah. And that scar goes on for a long time. But you hear someone say something like, um, oh, when I was in seventh grade, I won the spelling bee at my school. And we went down to the city championships. And I won. Big shot. I was number one, baby. <laughs> Here we go. Walked up on the stage. And I was nervous. Now, I would never admit to that yeah. because I love the sound of my own voice. Oh, yeah. It is my third favorite sound. <laughs> so. I got to know what number one is. By the end of the episode, we have to know what the, the first sound is because I hope it's the Beatles. <laughs> I, hope, I, hope, I hope that's the first sound you like the most. Hearing Paul McCartney write beautiful, magical songs <laughs> wow. because wow. we love him. I don't know him. I would like to know him. I hear he's fine. God, I loved Wings, too, man. Yeah. Wings were so good. <laughs> so good. Sorry to get you off. No, that's okay. I just had to. I, I, I got okay. the Beatles. I really... I, they're love not my top them. five. Really? Of, of sounds that I love? Oh, man. No, that's no, crazy. No, Katie's voice is number one. Good call. My granddaughter Megan's voice is number there two. There it is. And then okay. three then is yourself. And I'm usually... <laughs> I'm really, today, I'm three. Nice. Like, and I'm, nice. I'm one of my boys. One of my top five favorite people. Of course, you got to be top five. Well, otherwise, no matter where I go, I'm always with somebody who loves me. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, um, God, I forget what I was talking about. We were talking about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you threw it off with the Beatles, man. Yeah, I was uh, we were talking to... about. Um, oh, being with being okay with yourself. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, you've got to put actions to your words, of course, because. As much as, and I'm a word guy. Yeah. I but there are things words are insufficient for. This is true. You 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 can express certain things, and that's why we love songs so much because yeah. go, that guy said what I meant. He knows he gets me. And that's why Hallmark made a billion dollars. This is very true. I'd is like it, to buy a card that says you're the only one I'll ever love. <laughs> yes. It, I need it, twelve it, of them. <laughs> And it's like this, you know, like you can talk about paying the electric, but you kind of got to throw that action behind it and get <laughs> right. money on there, yeah. you know? I or want, your lights won't come on my, when you go home. I would you like know? my lights to stay on, please. <laughs> Have you paid the bill? Uh, oh, bill. I don't know about bills. B- bill, bills, bill lives next door. <laughs> I'll pay Bill if I'll keep the lights on. <laughs> And I got another fact of the day for you, my oh, friend. Oh, see, I interrupted uh, facts of the day. Oh, I'm we're sorry. good. We, we're, we're hashtag free. sorry. <laughs> hashtag me too. Uh, <laughs> Wait, I, that's a totally different hashtag. <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to use that hashtag. I'm not. I'm not in that group. I'm not allowed. Uh, Rhode Island was discovered in 1525 by Italian navigator uh, Giovanni de Ver- Verrazzano. Yeah, Verrazzano. The story is that he saw a similarity between this area and the Greek island Rhodes, but the Dutch explorer Adrian Block, they, uh, there in 1635, named it Root Island, Red Island, for the color of its soil. I thought that was pretty interesting. And the last fact of the day <laughs> is uh, a 2002 study found that a prevalence of blue eye color among the white population in the United States to be 33.8%. For those who were born from 1936 through 1951, compared with 57.4% for those born from 1899 through 1905. We, you have blue we, eyes? We have fewer blue-eyed people. Yeah. Straight up. Do you have blue eyes? No, I have hazel eyes. Really? I have blue. My son yeah. has blue. I have blue. And my daughter has brown. I had blue when I was a baby, but then they became hazel. I feel like hazel. everybody, everybody does. Has like, even my yeah. dog, dude, yeah. when he was a baby. Like I've got a picture of my puppy. Yeah, had blue like eyes. Blue eyes. Blue. Like, it's weird. But yeah. I think, I think um, I'm pretty sure I could be butchering this, but I think <laughs> I read that every every human starts out with blue eyes in the womb. Mm-hmm. And then once our eyes are, uh, you know, exposed to light, right. that's when it changes. Like, huh. that's what, like, makes your eyes develop whatever color. So but if I'd wanted blue eyes later in life, you I could tried have kept my eyes you shut. Should, <laughs> you should just tried harder. That's all you should I don't want to see anything unless it's blue. <laughs> could have done Oh, oh God. Oh, gee whiz fact. The Verrazano guy there. Yeah. Uh, Giovanni. There are bridges. There are bridges named for him. Really? In New York. The Verrazano Bridge. That's Verrazano awesome. Narrows Bridge. But also... It amazes me that he found Rhode Island, yeah. but never declared Connecticut, which is right there. Yeah, well, would... Connecticut's <laughs> like a, 20 yards away. Rhode Island's the smallest state yeah. in the entire... I've actually I never... found it! 
<laughs> I've actually never <laughs> been uh, past Pennsylvania. That's the furthest north I've we went. We went to New England last awesome. summer for our honeymoon. And I've heard nothing a, but beautiful things it's, about it. It, it is beautiful. Great, great people. Uh, we went and we uh, we Airbnb hashtag I'm learning. Hey hashtag uh, together. Got FTR. a house. Yes. Sorry. Just <laughs> didn't didn't do the brand hashtag. <laughs> hashtag but, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag can't use me too. Uh, but um, we we rented a house yep. in Pelham, New Hampshire, which is a little town on the southern corner of New Hampshire, yep. and it was an hour from everything we wanted to do. Sure. So we didn't have That's to awesome. live in the city. Yeah, you can. But we just drive there. Yeah. Okay. So, lovely town, Pelham, New Hampshire. Got there, met a few people, went shopping, did some stuff. Sure. Not, not much, it's just, but everybody responded to us exactly the way they would in Ashland. Really? If I said the same sentence to them. Really? And here it goes. So, what brings you to New Hampshire? <laughs> oh, um, or, or they'd say, so, where you from? Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, I'm from Kentucky. I can tell you it's from away. <laughs> it's from away. <laughs> yeah, okay. So what brings you to New Hampshire? Oh, God. Um, uh, it's our honeymoon. Yeah. Uh, I just married this beautiful woman right yeah. here. And they go, and you came to Pelham. <laughs> <laughs> you came oh, to Pelham? Oh, man, northern people honeymoon. were hilarious. But, but it's exactly, if someone came here, hey, uh, so where are you from? Oh, we're from uh, Schenectady, Schenectady, New York. <laughs> oh, really? What brings you to Ashland? We're on our honeymoon. And you came to Ashland? <laughs> That's exactly the, same, exactly the same response. <laughs> I'm like, why is it that we don't think where we live is worthy of someone else visiting? Yeah, that's hilarious, man. I've never <laughs> thought about that. I mean, that's really funny, though. That's I mean, really funny. I've never been that far up north. I really, really want to go just because of you know, like I, you know, like I said, I've heard that it's just beautiful. It looks great. You got the when the ocean. leaves when the leaves turn, it's unbelievable. Yeah. You need to come back when the leaves are turning. <laughs> I'm like, I have leaves that turn at my house. Yeah. I think that I, I know that the the level of it. Yeah, it's a little different. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, plus they turn because it's much colder there. Sure. And so it's like more dramatic, you think? Yeah, I think yeah, it is. It's like, it's like think, more rapid. Because, it's yeah, fast, it, it really know? breaks. Yeah. And the color's a lot more vivid. But, um, and I, I do want to go back. We uh, we got to do I a go tour. To Maine. I want to check out Maine. I don't I know went, why. I went to the, well, I told you, in the southwest corner of New Hampshire. Yeah, yeah. I drove to the southwest corner of nice. Maine. Nice. Went to Kennebunk and Kennebunkport, nice. Maine. Uh, went on a lobster tour. That's awesome. Learned a lot about lobsters. That's another more reason than, I want to go up there. Fresh seafood. Well, the fish the right freshest, there. The freshest. Literally the freshest. Now, now, here's the thing. We went on this tour, and at the end of it, we went out in the bay and, and, and the Atlantic Ocean and all yeah. this. And uh, they showed, they pulled lobsters up out of traps, showed us how to handle lobsters and all that. It was really awesome. cool. I love lobster. Then they bring I'd it down to right the. Up. Okay. I love it. Oh, how would you cook it correctly? Uh, well, here's the thing. I'm just going to take a stop here on my story about Kennebunk yeah. Portland <laughs> because I want to know the correct well, – because I think I know the correct way to cook lobster. Well, here's the thing. I can't really cook it that well. I just know people who can cook it well. Like, I know, like – you know how they cook it? Do you know what it is they do that makes it – I'm going to assume it's just like it, – it's boiled. It is. You boil it, and then, yeah. I mean, ah, I'm going to – here's the cri- here's the critical part. Yeah. You can't start the water until the lobster's in it. Okay, so you don't boil the water, then put it in. No. Okay. Because, from everything I've been told, yeah. now, I have never done this. Like I said, I've, I've never cooked everything, it, but, I, but everything I've been told is, and this, by the way, is also how you cook a frog. Yeah. And I've, how and how people die. Wow. <laughs> this is not the, because of frogs and lobsters. Just, <laughs> but you turn the heat up on the water, and then you get bring it to a boil, and the lobster. Dies you're talking peaceably. About, you're, you're talking about cooking them live. Yes. Okay. Okay. okay you have. Okay, well, it's the only way to do it, right? I got you. I got you. Because, you're absolutely right. Because if you if you throw a live lobster into boiling it's water, it's gonna go crazy. It, there's a there. They have no mouth. They have no sound. Mm-hmm. But there's a chemical scream that is emitted into the tissue. Wow. And it bitters the meat. Right on. So that's awesome. And now, this is how people die. Yeah. Is as the heat of their life is turned up. Mm-hmm. They just sit there and do nothing. 
Mmm. Dropping and that they knowledge. Make, they make no change. Dropping the knowledge. They feel I love it. it. I think I think it's a little more uncomfortable now. I love it. Change your environment. That's great. That's God, man. This Stay how, woke. This is how people Gosh. This is how people die. I love it. This is this is this is great. And I did not know you're supposed to cook lobster like that. That's I'm crazy. just making I just have been told that. I've never tried it. Fair enough. But fair enough. Um just you know. Anyways, to be completely back. honest. <laughs> hashtag together FTR. Back to the uh <laughs> Uh, southern border of Maine. Oh, right, right, right. So we go to Kennebunk and Kennebunkport, which are right next to each other. There's The Kennebunk River separates them. you walk in. But anyway, great art community, beautiful food, fantastically welcoming like people. Real friendly they people, know, you know? They know why you're there. You're there as a, tr- as a tourist. Sure. You do your business, and they're, they're very accommodating. That's awesome. But I was on this boat tour. They backed us up into this little cove, and the guy says, to our right. Your left is the <laughs> is the Bush compound where President Bush is home today because the Texas flag is flying and the presidential flag is flying. Wow. Like, he oh, lives in Maine? He, nice. Yeah, they have well, one they of his have, houses. Well, right. He had two homes. Nice. Texas. I knew, yeah, I knew about Houston. the Texas ranch. That's where he's from, mm-hmm. Texas. But then they had a vacation home in Maine. That's and awesome. they had bought a place called Walker Point. Mm-hmm. And still called Walker Point, which is why his son's George Herbert Walker Bush. See, uh, that was H-W, his dad's name H-W. Yeah, yeah. George W. is George Walker Bush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's, they, they came from the family Walkers, mm-hmm. which they bought that whole compound. Right, and so yeah. it's, a, and, I, and the guy's like, oh, uh, we're on the boat. Mm-hmm. And one of the women goes, one of the women also on the tour says, do they know we're here? <laughs> he goes, the Secret Service has been listening to us for about 30 minutes. That's fine. Because they've got uh, sub, they've got sub aqua, or uh, Submarine microphones, they yeah. can hear everything coming up. That's crazy. And they said, the first time we came over here, mm-hmm. he says, my first mate was sitting where she is now. Yeah. And she looked at my shirt, and he said, I looked at her, and her face was ashen. Because <laughs> she went, I looked down, and there were six laser dots oh, on my chest, and they're all moving around. They were not playing about Well, Mr. here's w. the thing. Here's the thing. He, he said, got on the radio and said, is there a problem? Yeah. Just on the open channel. Mm-hmm. And the, the Secret Service, who's on there, had called back and said, no, we're just getting the range. Oh, <laughs> God. That's they're terrifying. Just, they're just bored. That's terrifying. How, what do you got? I mean, they Most probably people. have, I mean, they oh. probably are just bored, literally. I mean, think well, about what they're they have waiting. to do. They're waiting. But the thing is, they, they, they just were checking ranges. Yeah. You know, it's nighttime. That's it's crazy. Doing, but they said before President Bush, 41, before yeah. he passed away, he was a madman behind his powerboat. Mm-hmm. He had two, he had twin, yeah. 400 horsepower engines oh my God. on his boat. And he would drive, according to the stories I yeah, heard, yeah. like a madman. Yeah. <laughs> Just go. I mean, he's, he's 89 years old jumping out of planes. The man, yeah. the man was <clears throat> shot down in World War II. I'm not the biggest fan of him, but, but he lived it up. Lived but it the, up. But the, here's the thing. The Secret Service boat mm-hmm. that's supposed to follow him? Yeah. 300. 300 horsepower. Oh, yeah, they can't it, it, keep up. No, no. He's <laughs> and gone. he's just gone. Yeah. And they said, he's, awesome. you better get out of my way. Yeah. Better come. Old and George again, Herbert Walker. You live, you live your life. Gosh. And, uh, you know, he's he's one of those guys that uh, he he lost in the campaign in 92. Reagan. No, he ran as he was Reagan's vice president. Oh, that's what he I meant. Lost, yeah, that's what he I meant. lost that's to Clinton. Meant. Yeah, that's what I meant. My bad. And then he and Clinton became tremendous friends. Really? Yeah. Best friends at the end. Matter of fact, uh, uh, President Clinton spoke at his funeral, and, and they were they were bitter political enemies. But afterwards, um, hit all those George, guys are all those guys are cool. Bush, behind the scenes. Bush forty three, Bush forty three asked um, his dad and President Clinton to go to the uh, place of the tsunami to go look into that over in yeah. Indonesia. And they went and they started doing a lot of charitable work together. Wow. Became very, very close friends. That's which awesome. is which is where we should be. We should not be being enemies with people who have different views than we do. Yeah. Ideas should not separate us from people who have different ideas. Fair enough. Like I said, I'm not like the biggest fan of the Bushes or the Clintons, but I mean you're absolutely right. I'm definitely gonna agree with that one hundred percent. Just because you come from different democratic or, you know, not Democratic, but, like, political you know, uh, political yeah. parties right. or whatever, uh, right. you know, if you're Democrat or Republican, you shouldn't let that deter your possible friendships or relationships with people. Right. 
and we're in such an, a, a time now. Oh, we're in a where if you bad have, time. If it's you like, have a it, it, political view, someone's going to call you a bigot, a, 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 a socialist, or, or a you're socialist, gonna, you're or socialist, communist, or a Nazi. Yeah, I mean, you can't. And, there's no in between. There's no neutral ground that people want to have now. It's like either one way or the other. Seriously, you know? I don't understand something, so I'm a racist. Yeah. <laughs> Please, I, and I, I let me know. I, you know, if I am racist, I do need to know. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, too, that people don't <laughs> understand. Like, if we could just sit down, like, as, as humans and just, like, have conversations like this and get to know people and, like, people who come from different, you know, backgrounds and heritages and all stuff like this, if we could just get together and just talk and be like, hey, man, we're not really that different. Do you know, we're who, just, do you know who has all the different backgrounds? Who? Everybody. Exactly. Because yeah, we just presume... Every single person presume, is just a mud at this point. We are all just. Uh, but we presume you know. that that somebody who lives in our neighborhood, who goes to our school, yeah, who works at our place of employment, yeah. Uh, I'm a I'm a 60 year old married white guy. Yeah. There is so much diversity in 60 year old married white guys. I every every summer after school starts again, I go back. Yeah. And there's always somebody who says. Hey, Mr. Stapp, I saw you this summer. <laughs> did you? <laughs> I did. <laughs> Where did you see me? You was over in Flatwoods. <laughs> I hadn't been to Flatwoods. I yeah. don't generally go to Flatwoods. Yeah. I have nothing against Flatwoods. Yeah. Hashtag, I don't go to Flatwoods that much. Hashtag Flatwoods rocks. crew rep up. Yeah. You know. But, but I just was I was I don't go to Flatwoods that often. Yeah. And I said, What was I doing in Flatwoods? You was riding your Harley. I don't own a motorcycle, much less a Harley. I said, how, "Oh man, how did you know it was me?" Well, <laughs> so, wait, saw a six wait, year old you saw a, white you guy. saw an overweight, <laughs> bald white guy on a Harley, and and associated with the only oh, overweight, bald white guy you know. Did I, was I wearing glasses? You were. Well, that there was you go. Me, kid. The most that was me. The most common phenotype. <laughs> In North America, <laughs> right here, people. That Obesity funny, poster man. child number five. That's so funny. That's crazy. But anyway, so. Let's get to, we're yeah, now get to through the, the introduction, yeah, that, kids. That, yeah, the introduction good, good section intro. has now ended. <laughs> we're now getting to the real meat. <laughs> the real stuff. Yeah. Um, so anyways, we got, first thing I want to talk about, my friend, yes. is you had mentioned to me that you love bad movies and why they're so good. <laughs> I do. So I have some examples of some movies that I've watched. I'm going to recommend everybody. Can I tell you why I love bad of movies? Of course. Bring okay. it on. I love bad movies because when you discover they're bad, you have to realize that cost a lot of money. Oh, yeah. That cost, a t especially bad movies with big stars. In oh, yeah, man. And then you realize there was a meeting somewhere in New York or Los Angeles or Chicago where people with checkbooks yeah. sat down and someone came in and said, here's the idea. <laughs> and then they talked to him and they gave him a script uh, or some treatment, sure. a scene, yeah. and they read it. Maybe they had the actors come in and perform it and they went, we're going to be so rich. <laughs> and they put their money in this movie and then... Millions, it, maybe. Oh, you can't make. They say you know Hollywood movies. You yeah. can't make one for less than twenty million now. Really? I mean, it's just That's crazy. crazy. Well, you you know you got to pay Leonardo DiCaprio twenty to oh, show at up. At least hey, that guy I is heard, making heard, the money. Heard a comedian say the other night. I was listening to uh, one of their podcasts, and this guy goes, "You should really watch." Leo DiCaprio in The Revenant. God, it was so. He good. won the Academy Award. He went through a lot. And the comedian <laughs> said, I think you underestimate what I'm willing to do for $20 million. <laughs> Dude, he lost 35 pounds. Yeah. I'd get down to 35 yeah. pounds for 20 million bucks. <laughs> Hashtag, oh I stole that joke God. and I can't remember the comedian oh, who look, told it. I'm going to tell but, you some podcasts you need to check out, man. You need yeah. to check out uh, Tom Segura and his wife, Christina okay. P. Okay. Christina Pazinski, I think is how you pronounce her last okay. name. She's a Polak like myself. <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> she got the ski, you know, all the skis. It's you know? all right if we say the racist <laughs> things about ourselves. I am true Pollock. 
my uh, my grandfather, my dad's you're Polish. <laughs> my dad's dad, um, or literally are you, are you was Polish. <laughs> Polish or Polish? He was literally born and raised in Poland. He actually died uh, over here on Long Street. Actually, the dead hmm. end one over by uh, Little Caesars and stuff. Uh, he died in that house up by my dad's house. Um, but yeah, he was straight up. Was him it and, suspicious? You said, I don't know. It I was, was at the end of the it street. Was, <laughs> It was strange. I don't know what was going he was on. was Polish on there Long was, Street in Ashland. There was a lot of socialists That's all around. We know. I, I got nervous about it. No, nah, he died uh, way before I was born or whatever. But uh, him and, uh, you know, my grandpa's mom or whatever, they were both from Poland. They were immigrants. You know, I'm a product of immigration, man. Like, and I love it. Aren't I think it's we great. All? I think it's great. Aren't we all? Yeah. At absolutely. some point, aren't we all? But uh, unless you're 164th, this is true. Native American. Yeah. Th- yeah. One, which aren't we all? We really well, are. Um, but you know, that's your sixth, that's your sixth cousins to anyone. Oh, one hundred percent. I am 100%. sixth cousins to President Obama. I guarantee it. That's you how just it goes. Get out there, and it's like after yeah. six cousins, it's like whatever. Yep, we're all related. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a good one to watch. It's called Your Mom's House. Okay. Um, and then you need to watch. Um, um, I, I gotta think of. I don't think. I don't think this. Long. I don't think this podcast has a video component. It may have it. Uh, armchair expert. Never heard of that. Armchair one. expert, Dax Shepard. Nice. Oh, Mar- Dax Shepard's Dax awesome. Shepherd. Yeah, married he's to legit. Kristen Bell. Yeah, dude, he's awesome. I it's like called him a lot. accidental. It's called armchair expert. Yeah, it lasts about two hours. That's awesome, it's, man. It's great. Uh, just, another just one I'm gonna later. throw you on to is uh, oh man, I'm trying to think of a real good one you would enjoy. No, Obviously, give me some. Give me some crap. Uh, I'll give you some crap then. Uh, no, I'm gonna give you another good one. Uh, Theo Vaughn this past weekend. Okay. New uh, new comedian. He's not really new, but like he's fairly new. Super hilarious. Good. Has a lot of funny guests and good. stuff. Uh, check him out for sure. He's good. Another you like Burt Kreischer? I'm sorry? Burt Kreischer, you ever don't, heard of him? Don't know him. Oh, man, he's a great comedian as well. Okay. He's the overweight white guy who takes his shirt off all the time. He did the machine story. That's that's Never heard of bad him? Choices. Oh, bad choices. Bad choices all over. Because the overweight, the overweight white guy oh, he used to be care. John Panette. He, no, he rocks John it, Panette, John Panette would do the things like, He'd go to a, 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 a an Asian buffet. Yeah. The guy come up, you go now. Yeah. You go now. You no more. Yeah. No more. You eat too much. You got to go. <laughs> Bad Asian impressions. <laughs> Hashtag offensive. <laughs> um, but John Panette died of his obesity, some heart issues and stuff. But, yeah. It, we all die of something. This is true. You know. But like here, I said, Bert Kreischer, give me your, man. Give me your bad movies. Oh, bad movies, yeah. yeah. So, Attack the Block, which nobody's ever heard of, <laughs> right. and, and you'll never hear of it because it's never going to be anywhere. Right. My cousin, shout out to Chris Leachman, uh, I'm actually going to go to his house after we get done hanging out okay. and uh, get some more ink, you know, because I'm white trash, and that's just what I'm going for. <laughs> uh, but anyways, Attack the Block, Ghost Rider with Nicolas Cage. That movie was so garbage, but I loved it. I loved it. I was like, yes, Ghost Rider, okay, okay. Ava you could, Mendez. You could, you, could, you could take that middle sentence. Yeah. That movie was so trash, but trash. starred Nicolas Cage and put it on almost any <laughs> Nicolas Cage movie. <laughs> no, you, you can't put it on Lord of War because that was a great movie. Lord of Arms War. Arms Dealer? Oh, yeah, Lord of War. Okay. Jared Leto. Okay. Dude, that was a good movie. Okay. Nicolas okay. Cage. But besides that, I'm going to agree. Oh, nope. The Rock. Sean yeah. Connery. Yeah. That was a good movie. Yeah. Besides that, you got me. You got um, me on no, that. I know. Really, I'm, I'm being mean because I'm really just lumping in Wicker Man. Oh yeah, that and, one wasn't that great. And uh, Sorcerer's the Weatherman. Apprentice. It was and okay. Here's the thing. I dug Sorcerer's Apprentice it was because decent. because he and this is the thing I love about Cage. Yeah. And I'm not I, I, not that he cares. Con Air, dude. How can we forget about Con he, Air? Con Air was good. He commits one. Oh, he gets it in, He's dude. Like, <sighs> I don't know what you're trying to get away with, but I'm going to stop you. Look, I'll tell you a movie that probably nobody's ever heard of of his that I really enjoyed. It's called Joe. Just Joe. J-O-E. And it was a great movie. I think it's on Netflix or Hulu. Real good. The last Joe movie I really liked was Joe vs. the Volcano, which is a Tom Hanks thing. Tom Hanks made Ryan's first movie together. Wow. Really awful. He has a terminal <laughs> disease, and he's going to throw himself in a volcano a good way to, go to out. satisfy. Uh, there's a tribe that needs someone to, to stop the volcano from erupting, yeah. and they're looking for somebody to throw themselves in the volcano. Nice. And Joe said, well, I'm dying anyway. Might as well. Uh, but he wasn't. So. 
<laughs> and he falls in love with Meg Ryan on the way there. And it's a it's a uh, really bad early movie. Right up there with Bachelor Party, another Tom yeah. Hanks movie nobody watches anymore. Nobody. But okay, so uh, Attack of the Block, the Block, Attack, Attack the of block. the Block, Attack the Block, Ghost okay. Rider, Ghost Rider, Too Fast, Too Furious. Super corny, but I loved it. Okay. Scary movie too. Oh, okay. And last but not least, Harry and the Hendersons. Yeah, yeah. John Lithgow. John Lithgow. Okay, now here's my guy. here's where I'm going to tie. Gordon Farquaad. I'm going back. I'm going to tie you into my list of bad movies. Get it, son. With John Lithgow, please. Okay. There are two bad movies that I actually that, and these are these make. You, you will think bad of me when you watch these films. Oh, I you need will. to. I need you to will. watch these things. Okay. The first one, John Lithgow, mm-hmm. is also stars Peter Coyote. Nice. Jeff Goldblum. Love Jeff Goldblum. Um, gosh. He's real good in Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> I enjoyed him. Uh, tons of other people in this movie. Crazy, crazy good cast. Yeah. It's called The Adventures of Buckaroo Bonsai Across the Eighth Dimension. Never saw it. Longest that. title. It's crazy. It is the story. It's like a Monty Python it movie. It is the story of a neurosurgeon, rock guitarist, nuclear physicist nice. who has a band of guys he works with. They travel around the world fighting crime and they're in they the world is invaded by uh Lectroids from the planet 10. Wow. And this is deep stuff. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. This is deep, man. Yeah, because and, and the way Buckaroo Banzai gets in, involved in it is that his atomic car drives through a mountain. It's about and how that starts it, usually, you know? It, yeah, right. That's, 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 usually, how any, that's once, usually how that goes. It, it's you a know? traditional, thought, traditional it, sci-fi least, trope you know, yeah. is to drive through a mountain. This is a but, thriller. And the reason is they say, well, how can you drive through a mountain? Well, if you look at an atom, it's mostly empty space. This is so true. So we drove there. <laughs> so, and it has my favorite line, uh, two, one of my favorite lines from any movie, which is, hey, hey, don't be mean. Remember, no matter where you go, there you are. Nice. That's right there. Living. And, and, and he's, li- he's playing music at a club. And Ellen Barkin's also in it. Nice. Ellen Barkin, John Lithgow. I gotta watch this. Uh, Steve Goldblum. Atrocity. Uh, John, man. Sorry, not J- Jeff Goldblum, not Steve. Yeah. Steve doesn't make this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, I gotta watch it's this. It's a great movie. Man. Okay. I'm okay, now. My second really, really awful movie favorite yeah. is a Bruce Willis film. Oh, yeah. Bruce Love Willis. Bruce Willis, Andy dude. McDowell. Such um, a good actor. Gosh, James Coburn. He's a big movie. Big movie stars. The Adventures of Hudson Hawk. Danny Aiello. He is a, he's a cat burglar who cat gets, burglar. gets out of prison. Yeah. Gets, Bruce Willis gets out of prison. But he is manipulated by his friend Danny Aiello to okay. doing one more job. Wow, they're gonna steal. Sounds like rounders, kind of. They're gonna same, steal same the. Uh, they're gonna steal a, a, a thing from the Vatican, mm-hmm. because That's a good idea. That's Leonard a, Leonardo yeah. Di, Leonardo do this at home, kids. Leonardo yeah. da Vinci <laughs> had created a machine that would convert lead into gold. Yeah, and if they steal this piece from the Vatican, this wealthy madman played by Richard E. Grant sure. and Sandra, Bern, Sandra Bernhard yeah. will convert lead into gold. And they're followed by CIA agents who are named after candy bars. That's a great name. It's a Three terrible. Three Musketeers, I hope. <laughs> uh, Kit Kat. Oh, that's a better uh, one. Snickers. Speaking yeah. of candy bars, what's your favorite candy bar, man? Oh, uh, this is a difficult question for me. As a, as a diabetic, I'm not supposed to have a favorite yeah, candy bar. Well, however, st- yeah, you got however to. You have one. there are, well, this is the thing. Um, I'm a huge Reese Cup fan. God, Reese's Cups are so good. Huge, huge cup fan. I mean, how can, it's so simple. Yeah. It's just so good. Just, and this is the thing. Simple. Here's, here's simple for you. Simplicity runs, man. Small, it runs everything. Small spoon. Yeah. Creamy peanut butter. Mm. Box of powdered quick. Ooh. Boom. Nice. That's legit. Yeah. Diabetic secrets, kids. <laughs> How I get my sugar. Diabetes. Um, but, uh, that's actually the correct way to pronounce it. You swear. Yeah, he is. I thought this guy no, was no, just no. It's actually real, correct. like, old no, school, no, like, no. L- language, I guess. He's the only person in the world who says oh, it correctly. Everybody just makes fun of that poor guy. Diabetes. Diabetes. I, or as, so I, as I say it with my friends, dang diabetes. That dang diabetes. I'm going to drop them beats. <laughs> them diabetes. That's crazy, uh, man. But, um, but Hudson Hawk yeah. and... Um, and uh, Buckaroo Banzai. 
Those are two great, horrible films. Yeah. Favorite movie. What's your favorite movie of all time? <sighs> Here's the thing, okay? I'm going to narrow it down because if I, know. I, if I genre, had... To, genre ruins everything. You well, got, if I had to pick like a movie I could watch every single day, yes. it's probably going to be Pulp Fiction. Okay. Pulp Fiction. Okay. Which I love Tarantino. Right. I've always right. loved it. Django. Dude, that movie was great. Okay. Real good. Okay. But if I'm going to have to pick uh, the best movie of all time, probably, The Usual Suspects. Okay. That's probably one of the best movies, okay. in my opinion, that okay. has ever been made. And it wasn't even like that well, like, pro- like the production wasn't no, no, that great or no, nothing. It's just. But it was just what it needed to be. Right. That's all you need. See, along and I that, love Kevin Spacey. Along that. Along love that. Him. That track, I'm a huge fan of Reservoir Dogs. Dude, Reservoir Dogs is great. Reservoir, Reservoir Dogs, is huge. Mr. Pink, good, yeah. that's my guy. But, but, and again, I, uh, in the interest of announcing unpopular opinions, yeah, um, I think Quentin Tarantino's laughing all the way to the bank because he's got people giving him massive amounts of money. Oh yeah, to do the same kind of movie, literally little little set pieces that are barely linked to each other. Literally. And, and the chapters, that, and I the, mean, yeah. the way he sets it up, dude, but, it's but the same. See, and that, to me, that's, to, to me, that's like, and I, I don't disrespect anyone's effort, but Leonardo DiCaprio does a drama, and, uh, uh, Sean Penn, same way. Same, they do a drama way. every two, three years, yeah. go get nominated, and then they walk home. This is true. Where And, and this is why, and in, in my humble opinion. Of course. Even Chris Hemsworth is a better actor than Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh. Because Hemsworth can hey, do drama. Hey, shots fired. Dra- shots Hemsworth, fired. Hemsworth wow. can do drama. He can do comedy. Dude, I'll tell you who one of my favorite actors of all time, mm-hmm. Mark Wahlberg. Underrated. He, super really underrated. underrated. And like you yes. just said, he can go from drama yep. to action yep. to, yeah. I mean, he kind of went like, it wasn't really like, it was like sad. What was it? Lovely Bones? Did you ever yeah, see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. that movie was Terribly sad. Yes. So he went and the he, book's did, even he worse, did Ted. So. <laughs> Ted, dude, Ted was hilarious, man. Uh, Super funny. The other guys. The other guys. Yes, mm-hmm. him and Will Ferrell. Uh, Daddy's home. Da- Daddy's, Daddy's home. Daddy's home, sure. dude. I would say he is one hundred percent one of my favorite actors. Another actor I'm gonna throw up there who's probably my favorite. Uh, I want to say Denzel, but he's one of those guys that kind of does the same role. It feels like you well, know, yeah, like, because the great ones find a lane and then they stay in their lane. John Wayne, Robert De Niro. Bruce Willis. Until Bruce Willis. Until he did Dirty Grandpa. He got out of pocket for that. Dude, you gotta watch well, that. It's funny. De Niro? Yeah. Well D- he went Grandpa, did he you went, see it? No. Oh, it's well, Zach it's Efron. Billy, it's Billy Bob Thornton and I'm I, I've got socks to wash. I can't watch <laughs> Billy Bob Thornton. <laughs> no, Billy Bob Thornton's not in D- Dirty Grandpa. Oh, which Robert one's De Niro. He in? Oh, Dirty he's in Bad Santa. Bad I'm Santa, getting, yes. Okay. Different. Okay. Dirty Grandpa is Robert De Niro, um uh Zach Efron. He's got a couple other actors okay. that are, you know, fairly known. Uh, mm-hmm. But you got to give it a watch. Well, it's see, funny. De Niro went comedy in the Meet the Parents. Meet the Parents. He right. did. Yeah, meet absolutely. The Fockers, all yeah, Meet stuff. the Fockers. Yeah, yeah dude. Oh, I love Meet that, the Parents. It was so the funny. thing is, and, and can you milk me, an, Greg? There's an underrated. <laughs> <laughs> there's an so underrated. Funny. There's an underrated De Niro comedy called The Intern. I've never seen The Intern. Uh, Anne Hathaway. Love Anne Hathaway. Anne Hathaway is the She's is great. the lead, and De Niro is a retired man who becomes her intern. Oh wow! It's a lovely comedy Love and Anne Hathaway, whole though. bunch of stuff with hipsters That's and funny. an old school man. Who would, he, they said oh. to him? He gets up, he gets, comes to, comes to work on a day off. Mm-hmm. They go, "Did you shave?" He goes, "Of course I shaved. I got <laughs> up." They're like, but "You're not going anywhere. You get up and shave every morning." And yeah. he's like, "They're like." What? <laughs> he goes, you're wearing socks. Yes, because you wear socks with shoes. <laughs> I mean, old school, man. Yeah, that's, that's funny. Stuff you do. So let me ask you this. Yes. If you had to choose your top three favorite actors, who are you putting up there? Or actresses. Throw them either or. Yeah. Either By or. By the way, I'm here to defend the word actress. Yeah. Because people keep saying. Please don't tell like, me it doesn't, like mean, Mary- it doesn't mean woman. <laughs> well, no. Does it, it does. not? It means a. A, wo- a female actor. Okay, okay, actor. okay. I just make sure. A woman actor. Okay, I just okay, make sure. A woman actor. Because words That's are what crazy now. Well, here's words the thing. have weird meanings now that I don't really know sometimes. Uh, it freaks me out. Well, I was listening to an interview with Julianne Moore the other day, and she says, as an actor, if you tell me there are five named actors in a film, mm-hmm. because the word actor where it gets is weird. a man. Now, you granted, think if, you tell me, if you tell me there are three actors and two actresses who have all been nominated for awards. Yeah. I'm going to go, okay. Because they don't say best actress 
They at, the, at the Academy Awards, yeah. they do. They say Best Actress. So, oh, so you're saying the different, the difference, uh, you know, the difference between it's more uh, information in one word. Yeah, it's like if you're talking about a movie, it's like these actors in it. But if you're talking about like awards, well, see, that's, they, crazy, that's the thing is the man, word should be okay. Yeah, because it's like actress, stewardess. You don't have stewardesses anymore. You have flight Waitress. attendants. You know, you have servers. Yep. That sounds it more, de- it it sounds changed, more demeaning yeah. to me. Yeah. You're my server. Yeah. I'm You're actually going a to server. Serve I, I take pride in being called a server. Sure. I'd rather be called a peasant first, actually, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, top three. Don't call me a server top anymore. Three, top three actors. Top three actors. Um, and in no particular order. No, 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 no. My more in either, no, really. In no particular order. Um, I, I have to go with uh, Denzel Washington. That's great. John Q. Uh, if you don't cry during John Q, you're a monster. You're uh, an animal. Uh, American gangster. God, yes. American, Frank, American Frank gangster. Lucas. Yes. Oh my God. And again, 10%. it's just just walking through. You know, <laughs> murdered yeah, every yeah. murdered Idris Elba in front of everybody. Here you go. Yeah. Here's, uh, here's, here's, here's your money. There's your money. Here's your yeah. money, buddy. And he took her, and again, it was basically. That's seriously his, one of the best his, movies. That's his Scarface. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Okay. That is his Scarface. Um, much better speak, than Scarface of, production wise, though. Speaking of uh, Scarface, Pacino. Pacino is? Pacino has nice. to be uh, one of Devil's top Devil's Advocate? Flights. Dude, that movie is well, legendary. Well, here's the Timeless. thing. Timeless. Here's the thing. Pacino gets raked over the coals because he only does dramas as well. Fair enough. He tried author, author. He did comedies. Never he saw did any? Some, no. <laughs> because they were not, they're, not, his, a, not his lane. Try, try not to do that again, Al. Yeah, come on, Pacino. Um and um, the third one. Dude, Al Pacino's legit, though. Robin Williams. Oh, God, I'm so glad you said that. Robin Williams, yeah. I'm so glad you said that. What because, was the movie again, him and Al Pacino were in? Uh, oh, I oh they were up. in... Um, I gotta look it up. Oh, yes. they were in Insomnia. Yes. Insomnia. Robin Williams said that uh, on that set, or like a, a person was talking about on that set, Al Pacino was like hiding behind his bodyguards and like <laughs> staying in his trailer the whole time. Robin Williams out there high fiving people right. and making fun of Al Pacino on right. set. Right. Like right. they said that he was so just full of life and so right. cool, man, right. and just so courageous and yeah. like charismatic and like nobody, you know, you didn't realize that he was just projecting that because he hated himself. Well, the thing is, you know, like Robin, he was Robin, bad path, man. Well, again, you're the notion of how we know how he feels about himself when he when he ended his life. He had discovered he had body dementia. Really, Louis body dementia. I did not know a that. A condition that the body starts failing systemically. Wow. And I don't know. I mean, Sad I. I this is this is flippant. I don't mean to be flippant, but it's yeah. going to sound that way. I will never take my own life. Me either. I won't because I love I, me too much. Not I, to be cocky. Exact, no, no, no. Not to That's be, exactly yeah. the thing. Not to be cocky. I would never. And cocky, but I would never. I like me too much. Man. I would never deny anyone the chance they to meet me. Believe that. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. I, you heard it here I, first for the record, baby. I, Hashtag together FTR. I could never imagine a world that I'm not in. Exactly, dude. <laughs> and I would want to live in one like that. So <laughs> that is great. And, and I also, love that. and this is again. Hashtag. I'm sorry in advance. One reason I would, no, I can't, I can't. That's too bad. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> anyway, uh, Robin Williams had these issues, and he obviously dealt with stuff through his life with substances. Absolutely. And he came, he you know, so, sobriety Dude, was difficult. His comedy was raw. Yeah. Dirty, and, vulgar, but, man. But Funny, also though. Also on point. Good. And this Timing is the thing. was perfect. This is the thing. And, and it's one of those things that we come back to numerous times when you talk about correctness. Yeah. Um, like, there are very few people as funny, Robin Williams, you can't clearly. Get, you can't get funnier than that guy. But there's somebody, there are very few people funnier than Louis C.K. Good call, dude. But you cannot listen to Louis C.K. now because he, Look, and Bill, Bill Cosby, same reason. All my, all my favorite, all, these all my role models are now sex offenders. <laughs> All my favorite people. Hashtag and, 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 together FTR. <laughs> Dave Chappelle said oh, that on oh. his on his on one of his oh, new Netflix. Quote, yeah. I, I'm quoting Dave Chappelle. All of my role models are now sex offenders. I'm with you, Dave, because yeah. I love Bill Cosby. Yeah. My daughter was watching Bill Cosby last night. Yeah. I introduced her to the Cosby Show. There's, she won't stop watching it. I'm pumped nothing, about it. There's nothing funnier than why is there air? 
Dude, or why Noah. is there air? Or Noah. That one the is story so Noah. good. Yeah. And you don't have to see him. It's an audio tape. It's right. an album. This right. is before right. like before, video, this is before videos were like big for comedians. You know and what I mean? You see, you see, and again, not taken away from Eddie Murphy, not taken away course. from Chris Rock or anything of course. else. Cosby would walk out and sit down in a chair. Yeah. Two hours later, people are leaving with sides hurting, oh, yeah. tears streams down their face. Because and he wouldn't cuss. He wouldn't do nothing. Just he was stories. clean. I mean, it was it was good. Dad, man. can we have some? You make us <laughs> breakfast. Well, what do you want? Eggs. <laughs> okay. Dad, can we have cake? <laughs> there are eggs and cake. Eggs and cake. There's wheat, there's wheat and cake. Yes. There's meat. Everybody gets cake. Shum, <laughs> shum, shum. And the wife comes down. Why are the children eating cake? <laughs> and the children lied. They lied. Yeah. So, but yeah, dude, that's, Bill Cosby's they, so the funny. Idea of, the idea of humor, and again, I don't know why. And this this may get sideways. Sure. I don't know why. And 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 I have been guilty of this myself in the past. Did you go to the Bill Cosby show? Did you go to the Chris Rock show? Did you go in Rock's Rock's latest Netflix special? Uh, it was so personal. Dude, I was blown would, away by it. In, tambourine, right? Yeah, it was yeah. Called tambourine. But the whole, I the didn't whole, even it. the whole, the whole bit he did when he talked about why he cheated on his wife. Mm -hmm. I wanted strange, and because I did that, I created it at my home. Mm -hmm. It was one of the most compelling uh, uh, male things I've ever heard a comedian say. Yeah. Again, I don't think it's going to be a piece that's going to stand. Forever sure. to think about Chris Rock, yeah. But what, you, did you go to those places to see a role model, or did you go to those places to make somebody make you laugh? You don't ask that of your musicians. And here's and your what I'm going to say: I'm going to make it very clear on how I feel about it. You have to separate the actor from the art, mm -hmm. because if we don't, if we sit here and we're like, "Oh, we don't like Kevin Spacey because he did this." We're not going to have any movies he did. We're not going to have any inter I don't entertainment. Think Kevin's going to make any more movies. Oh, no, he, yeah, he, I, I don't mean in that sense. I mean no. like we're not going to have entertainment, right? Because all these people are humans, They're just flawed. like us. We are all monsters to our own degree. It just depends on how much of a monster you are. Are you the monster who is Harvey Weinstein, or are you the monster who looks at the homeless guy knowing he's hungry and you look the other way? Which one are you? Or do you, you know? ask him if he has change for a twenty? When he asks Thank for a you. couple bucks. Thank you. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So well, I worked. I worked with that guy. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, he goes, I mean, guess what I did? And um, taking pictures and stuff. No, like, he was, we're all monsters. Well, they try they, to you know get over yourself a little bit when it comes to things like that. It's pretty much what I'm trying to project. I feel yeah, like because yeah. people are like, oh well, Bill Cosby did this to all these women. I'm never watching the Cosby Show again. <laughs> I mean, who, dude. Things Your happen. call. Yeah, and here's the thing with Louis C.K. He is seriously really funny, and I didn't start getting into him until recently. Mm -hmm. The bit he has about the uh, Native Americans and the Indians, like oh my gosh. how he's like saying, like, yeah, we know you're not Indians. We're just going to keep calling that you Indians my, for 200 my, years. My, no, here's Dude, the that's thing. that's hilarious. I, that's I, just said, I just quoted him yesterday. I yeah. Think. I said, 30 minutes, 30 minutes after Columbus arrived in Santo Domingo, he goes like, well, this is an India. <laughs> This is clearly not India. New world. Yeah. Not but India. 400 years later, people yeah. are going. Oh, I was just saying 200. You're, yeah, you're an Indian. Like 400, you're right. Yeah, you're an Indian. Straight up. Indian tribes. Now, this Katie, is crazy. Katie, traveled, Katie traveled to Arizona to visit a friend last spring. Mm -hmm. And she discovered very quickly. And, and to, to the, this is why, one of the reasons I love her, she makes me a better dude. Sure. But, um, she she came back and I said, "What'd you learn? What'd you find out when you're out there?" We talk about this all the time. Yeah. What'd you learn? She says, "Never, never call a member of the Apache Nation an Indian." It's really super disrespectful. She said, she said the people would come out there say, "I'm going to the." They would talk about, it. "Oh, they walk by," and mm -hmm. Katie and her friend um, Kay are standing there talking to somebody working at the casino. Yeah. And they'd come by and say. Somebody yell, some again, some Anglo, some white person. Sure. I love Indian casinos, and you could just see it go across their faces. Oh, dude, super they disrespectful. Call them, call, they Native American called natives, just natives. Oh, not even the American. Not even Amer just well, Amer American, American dude, wasn't here. I'm cool with whatever. If it's, um, if somebody wants to be called whatever they want to be called, I'm cool with that. It doesn't bother me a bit, dude. I want to respect people and their heritage. 
And I feel like yeah, I've talked about it on one of my episodes. I feel like personally, if we're gonna have a uh, you know a Gay Pride Month, a Black History Month, things along those sorts, where's the love for the Native Americans, man? Because those guys went through worse than any of them. In my opinion. Yeah. And uh, like I said, I touched on that subject, and it was controversial. Some people agreed. Most people agreed with it, honestly, because it segregates us further. Wow. If we're putting labels on things, that makes us, that that takes the human, you know, the human, not right, but like the human feel mm-hmm. off of things. You start labeling well, things, get, it, it's wrong, dude. If you're going to get real serious like that, let's stop calling women females. Good call. Because in humanity, great, there great are point. girls and women. Great point. If you call a woman a female, you're, mean, you're removing her humanity, yeah. and you're referring to her as the breeding half of any species. That's a great, valid point. You cannot call a woman a female if it's – you say – because guys what's, what's are wrong? boys than men. So, yeah. <laughs> well, some sometimes. Become, some become dudes. Some, some become time. guys. Bro man dudes. Man, you know? Yeah. Bro man dudes. You know? Go, bro dudes. Bro, bro dudes. Bros. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> boys and males, yeah. men, go through so many – and very few people I'm actually, a man-child. I well, admit it. I, don't, this, I know this. It's so like I tell, I tell the kids at school. I say, you, you know, I'm working on you becoming human. Yeah. That's what we you're all bar- are. You're barely, pe- you're barely people. But I'm this working on you becoming human. This is and true. And the difference is people, that's what they call, it's a peopled planet, right? Yeah. Humanity requires in relation between the two. This is true. You, this, is why, this is why people get away with stuff in the middle of the street and you don't go, I'm sorry, why are you doing that? You can't judge me! This is true. I, I'm not judging you. I want to know yeah. why you're doing that. Concerned. Oh, it's it's my right. I don't know if it is your right. Is it really your right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and people, that's, this is another thing I'm going to, not to interrupt, sorry, but no, like, uh, no. you know, to spin off of that. This is why we're together. Ex- together, FTR, F-T-R hashtag. baby. Hashtag. hashtag. Yeah. So here's my thing. I'm going to lead off the, uh, you know, with that or whatever is like, I'm going to agree with that 100%. I don't. I feel like people who are out here protesting in not a peaceful manner. Mm-hmm. I'm talking straight up. Like you, we can all tell the difference. There's a difference between peaceful protesting. There's a difference between protesting with aggro intent. So, in my opinion, if you are bringing aggro intent, you need to be maced. You need to be tasered. Okay. You need to be beaten in the street. You, I mean, I am 100. percent You've known me for a long time. Mm-hmm. I'm very free spirited. I believe everybody deserves rights. I believe everybody mm-hmm. deserves the equality that you know has been given to some people everybody deserves that but when you start getting out here and getting crazy you need to be handled like that's just my opinion there needs to be police force like i i'm that's just how it needs to go but i was oppressed and i need to steal this television (laughs) that's what i'm saying if you were trying to loot (laughs) if i have this television i will be less oppressed oppressed yeah i'm gonna steal from this guy who's been working his whole life yeah he's got a business that's what i'm saying like but it's ridiculous. And, and this is the thing that people don't realize that and and there is a way first of all, let me back up. Yeah. All protest is inconvenient. One hundred percent. All protest right. is disruptive. Let's be clear on that. It is all protest is. is disruptive. But sometimes it, it needs to be done. It doesn't have to be destructive. Exactly. That's and the this, difference. There's a there's a I forget who, who wrote When people this. start tearing stuff up, that's when I'm like, all right, hit them with the beam. Bag. Okay. Here's straight the up. I'm here's down the, for this. Here's the question then. Are you? Do you agree? Do you think, think there's a valid? But one? No, I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Do you think there's a valid reason for dismantling or renaming uh, dismantling statues or renaming institutions nope. for Confederate generals like Robert E. <clears throat> Lee University? They're thinking about taking down the name. Here's my thing. I'm gonna. It, it's a. It's a slippery slope, but I'm gonna go ahead and be honest. Okay. If I see a rebel flag, finally, yeah, <laughs> I've been lying this whole time, disrespectful. <laughs> no, but here's the thing: if I drive past your house and you're, you know, wherever, whatever, if I'm driving by and I see a rebel flag in your window, I'm not gonna think you're a history teacher. I'm probably gonna think you believe a certain way, whether you believe the true meaning of the Confederate flag, which was state governed. Um, 
politics, which I believe, I don't think the federal government should have as much power as they do, and that's just my opinion. I'm with that. Mm-hmm. But that's not what it got represented. It got, it got destroyed by the Nazis. Mm-hmm. It got destroyed by the KKK. Sure. So therefore, they tried to represent their self as mm-hmm. the Confederate flag. So that's where it gets weird. In my opinion, I don't think the statues should be taken down because they are a piece of our history. Right. If you start deleting history, you won't know where to not make the mistakes again. Yeah, and these and mistakes were made, and we have to learn from them. That's exactly right. It, deleting any part of history because it's inconvenient, it inconvenient that's, to you now. That's why I believe that there should be – I don't think there should be a Gay Pride Month in the sense of awareness of, like, the proudness. I think it should be more educational, in my opinion. Like mm-hmm. I said, if we're going to do it on that type of level, it should be an educational. This is what – um, homosexual people had to go through the LGBT community had to go through this to get where they're at now. Mm-hmm. I'm with that. Mm-hmm. I think everybody should be aware. We should not be ignorant to the subjects of things that we have to live with, you know, and deal with on a daily basis. Sure, that is one of the things that has definitely happened. Mm-hmm. It was definitely wrong of what people have done and treated homosexual people in a horrible manner. Mm-hmm. Same thing with African Americans. Same thing with uh, the Jewish uh, people. Same thing with Polacks like me. You know. <laughs> You know, same thing with, uh, you know, Irish. The the Irish were literally at war in their own country yeah. with Great Britain. How long ago? Not even a couple years ago, it seems like. I mm-hmm. mean, a decade ago, there were still bombs going off and stuff like this. 20 years ago. Yeah. This is real. Irish people were slaves to Great Britain. This is a mm-hmm. real thing. This is facts. People can look this up. And people were all crying about... They don't have Wi-Fi at their house. These people were getting murdered. <laughs> like these people were bombing yeah. the, the capital. The houses you know, were being burned. Down. Literally, they were yeah. bombing cars of political um, figures because they were scared for their little, life. Little they wanted a de- little more than a decade ago, but yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. You know, yeah. I'm you know whatever. Yeah. It's been a while, been a but while. it ain't been that yeah. long. It no. is 2019, so you're right. 2009 was a decade ago. Here's you were the thing. absolutely Here's right. Here's the thing. January 1, 1990 is 30 years ago. God. That's crazy. I know, I know. I'm 23, man. I was born in 96. I See, mean, this and is that's crazy. See, <laughs> in uh, 1990, yeah. I'd been teaching for six years. Wow. Okay. That's 19- crazy, yeah. man. That puts some yeah. perspective yeah. on yeah, it. That's uh, wild. It's a, it, we have a, a long arc that we yeah. go through. And, and it is a, it's one of the things about life that you end up having these chapters, and you look back and you go, and it's one of my one of my beliefs that this is an evidence of God's sense of humor. Sure, as every five years you look back and go, I didn't have a clue. Didn't have a clue. Five years, five years ago. So literally. like right now, you're 23. Mm-hmm. So look back at 18. I literally knew nothing. Okay, at 18 you would have looked back at 13 and gone, I am such <laughs> a loser. I think it continues your whole life. It really does. I'm like, I'm like a, I'll be 104. And you'd be like, I'll be oh, down, I'll man. be down, I'll be down there at the mall. Yeah. On my hovercraft walker. <laughs> and I'll be like, using, scooter has using, a hover using, on my, it. using my Bluetooth yeah. insure pump to send the, the food into my stomach. <laughs> and I'll be like, when I was 99, I had no idea how to do any of this. I was now such. Now I know. Now I'm down. I know. I'm, I'm, you know, I've got my, got my Google headphone yeah. implants. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, we'll be chipped by then. We'll be. Uh, we, oh. it, this is what's going to happen. It'll be like you're then, already chipped. It's well, a cell phone. You're absolutely right. The machine is already a part of us. You were very correct. Skynet my friend. has already won. You Hashtag are, together, <laughs> FTR. You were very Skynet correct. Skynet has won. But, but let me let me say this though. You got to think. It's going to get to the point where it's going to be like, man, do you believe people talk to each other? <laughs> do you believe that? What are they doing? Those guys actually read books. Those guys no. watch TV. We got it in our head now, five, man. We can talk to each other five, through five years telekinesis, ago, you know? Five like, years ago, one of my one of my friends walked into the lobby. Actually, it would be telepathy, right? Yeah. Telepathy is when you yeah, talk. Yeah, okay, okay, actually, yeah, my bad. Telekinesis no, is like power moving through your mind. Things, okay, yeah. Things yeah, telepathy, my bad. So we'll have telepathy. Yeah, well, yeah. if you have tele- telepathy, you, have telekinesis you say the right things. Much. You can move someone. Yeah, this is true. This is but, true. But uh, one of my friends walked into the lobby at, at Blazer High, and her son said, Mom, what's that? She said, you've seen a phone before. He goes, no, phones are fine, but what's that thing coming out of it? He'd never seen a phone with a wire. A landline? Never seen a phone. Dude, my generation was the last generation to have landlines. I'm telling you. I remember having a landline at my dad's. This was, dude, last time we had a landline, I was in eighth grade. Here's how bad it's got with technology. Yeah. The other day I saw someone smoking an actual cigarette. I thought I was watching a pioneer. (laughs) (laughs) Do you have a covered wagon? (laughs) Where are your oxen? (laughs) 
Did you die from dysentery on are, the Oregon Trail? Are you, are you I'm a- tired of this. Are you Amish? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that, that may have been mispronounced so for funny. humorous effect. Hashtag, please don't be offended. <laughs> that is hilarious. I'm man. trying to offend the Amish, yeah. and they're not listening. They're not listening. <laughs> they, they're, they're not going to ever see this. This is bad. Uh, but let me ask you this, my friend. <laughs> okay. Have you ever watched Star Talk with Neil deGrasse Tyson? <laughs> no. Oh, dude, you got that's another show you got to check out. No. Brilliant individual. Uh, Seriously, yeah. one of the smartest guys. Like when it comes to his lane. Okay. Love him. Also, do you not like Neil deGrasse Tyson? No. You don't? I don't. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I find you to be an opportunistic hack. Really? But, but, you know, hey, everybody's, when your your bell rings, when your bell rings, if you want to do it, step up. That's true. Bill Nye, the science guy, doesn't have any respect for me because he started out as an actor in Beaker's world. Oh, yeah. It wasn't like... I'm Beaker. No. Yeah. It was a, it was. You don't like Bill Nye either? He's fine. I think both of them take themselves a little too seriously. Really? But it's, again. I wasn't a big fan of Neil deGrasse Tyson. I don't get a whole lot of this stuff. Like, if this doesn't get changed, things are going to end in 24 years. Yeah. How do we know? Because we we can't. We just measure. Try to gauge it, It's the hottest year since 1812. In 1812, they how do we measure it? They didn't have a pretty good grip on yeah. absolute zero. T- they didn't know so, what temperature was. Well, they, they knew, but they didn't. It's hot, Jedediah. <laughs> but it's Can not I like- take off my wool shirt, which is <laughs> the only kind of wig. shirt we have? Oh gosh, That's and my hilarious. hat made of wool. <laughs> Here's the thing: I'm going to agree with you. I did not like Neil deGrasse, Neil deGrasse Tyson until. I saw him on Joe Rogan, and I kind of got a little different light of him again, on how he again, was. Again, I've know? not, I've not listened, and I, I'm, I know he's a great speaker, brilliant, very smart guy, very intelligent, knows his business. I did an but, interview with Stephen Hawking too; that was really cool, like ten minutes. Well, kind of an interview is like him just I'm, I'm, asking questions, trying to figure out what Stephen Hawking just, was talking about. A, even Stephen Hawking, uh, apparently one of the greatest, greatest minds ever. I don't one of them. know. I don't know. He couldn't get a better voice simulator. You think? I, would think, I mean, you would think, man. Hello, I'm Hello. Stephen I Hawking. No. Stephen. But again, very old school. Yeah, he kicked it old school. Yeah, he's he like, really did. I, I, I want something that sounds like an Atari 64. Dude, seriously, like it was so funny <laughs> looking at the videos of him um, in like zero gravity. Like they put him in like a zero mm-hmm. gravity thing. Dude, that was so cool just to look at his face and see. The expression that man had because his body was his prison. Did like, you did up. you watch the film about him with Eddie Redmayne? No, I didn't either. I didn't check it out. No, we're gonna have to check it out. No, <laughs> he's fine. He Never. does his thing. He oh, if I, see, if I see it, I'll be like okay. But no, no, I was gonna tell you. Yeah, favorite movie, one a movie you're gonna watch every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it actually one of those movies that makes me feel better about myself. Really, I really do. Uh, and here's something else. I don't know if you know this about me. Uh, my one of my, my guilty pleasure TV show mm-hmm. is Cops. Oh, I want to. But here's the thing. It's no, funny. But you're. But that's because it's the worst day of someone's life. It really life. is. Yeah. And I'm sitting there laughing. <laughs> okay. Hey, it's Katie. Like, Katie. He's got no shirt on. He's sweaty. <laughs> he's drunk. And he's got a plan. He hates his life. He's like, oh, you don't understand. I love her. <laughs> That yeah, is I know. Funny, man. But that that's what's bad about me. Yeah. Okay, I like watching that. That's funny. Okay, now, movie that makes me feel good about myself. Yeah. Master and Commander Far Side of the World. Nice. Russell Crowe, Paul Bettany. I love Russell great Crow. movie. It's it's Gladiator a, Son. It's, no, see this God. is a this is a movie about a a uh, uh, French, I think he's French. No, British, a British uh, ship captain right on. in the South Pacific. I, I feel like in in like the in the middle of the 19th century. Now, here's the thing. I love that movie, yeah. and I had seen it a couple of times, and I wanted to buy it. Yeah. So we're in a bookstore, and I'm looking through the DVD section, and I find it. <laughs> I'm like, Katie, I found it's the, the movie. one. She's like, my precious, awesome. awesome. Yeah. You, are you gonna buy it? Yes, I'm gonna buy it. Of I'm course, gonna I'm gonna buy it. My favorite movie at yeah. home. So I take it up to the counter. Yeah. And the guy like, the guy's going, you know, this is based on a series of novels. No, I did not know that. <laughs> this is actually the first one in the series. That wow. Really great. And he picks up my and You really DVD. didn't know this? No. Oh, so you were and he walks, really like, oh my and God, he walks crazy, toward, dude. He walks toward the section of historical fiction yeah. so he can take me to this novel. That's great. And I'm like, it's a series, huh? He goes, yes. 
it's a series of novels about this commander and his adventures. Nice. And I said, but reading's hard. <laughs> and he goes, you can do it. I believe I'm you. I'm like, I got but faith. I just want to watch the movie. <laughs> Isn't the movie the same thing? <laughs> he says, there's so much more in the book. Yeah. Details, my friend. I know. And, I'm, and, I, and Katie is on. She walked away from me. Yeah. Because given my job, yeah, you I should goofy. be. I should be like, tell me more about the character development and plot yeah. arc. But no, <laughs> I'm going. Oh, how many pages is it? Yeah, you just want the movie. Is the print big? <laughs> Just have pictures. Exactly. <laughs> Coloring he's, system. He's, it's a it's a wonderful novel. Yeah. You should. I should buy it, huh? Yes, and read that it before you watch great. the movie. I'm like, that's so funny. I'm not man. Gonna, I've already watched the movie. Yeah, I already, I'm already know this movie. This, but I, t- I, I have the novel at my house. That's great. And I've never read it. Next person I'm gonna <laughs> ask. <laughs> next people I'm gonna ask you about who are great people at what they do. In my opinion, Graham Hancock and Randall Carlson. You ever heard of these guys? No. Oh, brilliant individuals. Who, are, who is Graham um, Hancock and Randall, Randall Carlson? Randall Carlson. Randall. Uh, Graham Hancock is a guy. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to put you on to his book. I'm going to, after uh, you know, after we get off air and stuff, I'll put in the description for you guys who haven't I'm read it as well. I'm getting homework. Yeah. <laughs> The roles have reversed. <laughs> the roles have reversed, my friend. Can Tables I, have turned. Can I treat your homework yeah. the way you treated mine? <laughs> <laughs> Got me, too. Look, I'm getting roasted on my own show, man. Look at Boom. this. Look, <laughs> FTR, man. This is great. Hash um, the tag. No, but seriously, man. Graham Hancock, brilliant individual. Randall Carson. Uh, I'll give you a summary. Pretty much, Graham Hancock is the, uh, the magician of the gods. So okay. it's essentially about, like, he believes that the Earth is on, like, its sixth cycle, seventh cycle, whatever, you know, okay. like how catastrophic things have mm-hmm. happened to the Earth, as we can prove. Um, different things that have happened. Um, he's real big in, like, Egyptian culture and stuff like that, yeah. so you get to learn about some of the things that he believes and what research he's done. Um, Cats are the embodiment of former spirits? Yeah. <laughs> no, like, actually some pretty cool stuff. Uh, Go- Anubis. Yeah, Gobekli Come Tepe. Come get me. Gobekli Tepe is a place, like, that he had, not he didn't discover or whatever, but, mm-hmm. you know, um, uh, archaeologists have discovered, and he thinks that it was, like, an ancient civilization that might have been godlike, you know, and, like, mm-hmm. things that were, like, very, very ahead of their time. I mean, they had irrigation. I mean, they had, I mean, just crazy, incredible things that were going for their right. civilization, but right. we know nothing about them. And also, Gobekli Tepe, where that was, it's not like a living place. It was like a ritual-type place, you can tell, because the way it was set up in the structure. Mm-hmm. Um, but they think maybe that, like, you know, in a 20-mile radius, their tribe lived there, whatever. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. It's it's not like set in stone, what like killed nonfiction. Them? What killed them? They He believes that either... Uh, they starve to death due to the climate, or he believes that uh, the uh, the catastrophe that happened during that cycle right. killed him pretty much. You know, I and, wrote a short story. But I mean, story the population time. still like they still held up, but they just like that civilization just died. You I know? wrote a short story one time about a tribe of people who didn't like anyone. They they were so insular. They Americans? Be, they, no, no. We we <laughs> like taking everybody's stuff. Um, we do. We're the bullies of the world. But um, they were so they, they they were living near a river. Yeah. And these other people moved in and started building industri- industry near the river. Sure. It's noisy, so they moved to a lake, and then uh, people coming in there started harvesting fish. And then it's uh, so busy, so they moved and they kept moving the mountains. So they came to get timber and the. <laughs> they finally moved where there was no water, no food, and yeah. then they all died out. And that's the end of the story. Easter Island? Is that what you're talking about? No. no. Because did that's a very the, similar story. Did you know the – I did not. I just you thought, ever read about Easter Island? I just watched a documentary on Easter Island the other Pretty day. Pretty cool. About the fact that there are bodies under the heads. Really? I didn't know that. I didn't yeah, know that's where they bury the people or something? No, no, no. The, the statues are like 30 feet tall. Oh, yeah, they're enormous. But the heads are the only things showing. Wow, okay. The heads are the okay. only thing showing. They did excavations. Oh, you're the, talking about the actual body. I thought uh, you no, the No, no. <laughs> that's right. They're tombstones of giant 
you, concrete headed I people. Meant, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm I'm dumb. Anyways, Rock, Rock Nufus yeah. headstone is right over there. <laughs> That's why we face the ocean. The Easter Island's super interesting, though. Like, for those of you who don't know, it's pretty much like uh, the best island ever that had like everything on it, and then they just were greedy and gluttony took over essentially, and then they pretty much hunted everything and killed everything and ate everything, and then they died. Right? It's about the summary of it. That's not what the documentary said. Really? What the documentary said? They had no idea what happened to them. (laughs) Really? They believe I probably just read a theory. That yeah. It was yeah. probably just a theory. Yeah, the theory the, was that everything was flourishing so well, and like they just were gluttony. And, in the, in the up, documentary, you know, they did figure no out balance. how they moved the statues, because the statues okay. are like 30 tons. Huge. Massive statues. And they said, how would this primitive culture have done it? And what was the documentary uh, you watched? What was it on? Uh, it's on YouTube. Okay. Easter Island. Secrets of Easter Island. Okay, cool. Because um, there's a bunch of different like theories nine, about there's it. There's like nine documentaries called Secrets of Easter Island. Yeah. So. Find the right one. Yeah. You'll know. They're all secrets. <laughs> um, but uh, they figured out that if you put ropes across the heads of the, the tops of the statues, yeah. and some people stood in the back, and people stood, you could walk them. Wow. And they're like That's 30 feet high, super, and they're, three, they're 30 tons. Super ahead of their time. A lot of 30s in there. I don't think any of those are accurate, but yeah. they're big. But and And the difficulty I have... With theories like this, yeah, is that um, as a person of faith, I already have a pretty strong worldview about where things came from and how of things course. came to be. Yeah, and so I'm looking, and and these people That's are trying to explain bring me to all my next one. Not to interrupt you. Things. Keep going. Yeah, I, I just well, you these people are trying to explain something. all these other things by these other methods, and I'm like, okay, but what about the this particular? Explanation is there a problem sure. with that? Well, and, think, and the idea that there people go, well, you don't know. Well, yeah, no, no, can't disprove this is, or prove this is either where, of them. This is you where know, that's faith, where it's it weird. This is where faith comes in, mm-hmm. and the idea of I and again, I don't have to explain a lot of stuff because most stuff is way above my pay grade. Of course, I have two jobs. Yeah, have two jobs in this life. One is love God. The other is love people. Yeah, that's it. Outside Pretty of great that, jobs, to be honest. They are. And, and the thing is, as long as I stay in those, stay in my lane, to use that phrase we Everybody's were talking about. Everybody's going to stay in your lane. You stay in my lane, which is to love God and love people. Therefore, I am re- delivered. You're living I'm, the best I'm life. I'm delivered from having to judge anything. Oh, yeah. I mean, can I say. Everybody has judgment. Well, can, yeah, well sure. Every, everybody well, has can judgment. I say, can I say, you know, and, and you and I have had very candid conversations. Of course. About stuff, choices made. D- decisions, decisions, uses, decisions uses, my friend. Usings and stuff. And I say, you know, is that the best one? And I'm going to question that. Now, if you don't, if you say, yes, that's my best choice, yeah. I can disagree with you. Of course. I can, I can say, you know what? If you're going to continue doing that, yeah. I don't think I can watch you do that. Of course. And here's my thing that I love about you and I love about a lot of people that I know that I get along with really well. You are a man of God. You love God. You're a, you know, a well-known Christian. But at the same time, you're not closed-minded. You are okay. very well open-minded to other things that you know might change your mind on certain different aspects of life. You I know? D- I've like, discovered something about myself, Taylor. I want, you to, I want you to hear this because oh, yeah. I've never said this publicly. I want to hear it. I don't know everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's so I don't, great about I don't, people I don't know like everything. you and I. I don't people know like everything. you and I, we know we don't know everything, and that's what's so good. Because here's the thing. People who, I don't want to say mindlessly, but people who just fall into religion and don't even question anything about it or no. don't. I, I, I can't I can't agree with that mm-hmm. because if we don't question things, that's when we become – Animals. There's a there's a great under, that, that, underused I mean, scripture uh, where um, God compliment the Bible compliments thoughtfulness and and thinking and people and I really get frustrated with folks who go, well you can't believe that because there's no proof. Well, there's no proof well, for most you, things. No, that well, we no, here's know. the thing: if you if you refuse to accept what proof I present, of course. You'll never understand. There's no, there's not going to be, you know, different times you come to someone and say, see, here's why your relationships don't work. See this pattern yeah. you're in. No, that's not me. Okay. You beat women. Here's the evidence. Here's you are not going to have a relationship. Right. You know, like. well, the, but the notion, uh, there's a there's a passage in the Bible that says, and these, these people, the Bereans, they're from a, a community called Berea, and it says, and they 
every day they went to the scriptures to see if the things they were taught were so. Wow. They didn't just accept. Even you can't Paul, just accept things. Even Paul, Peter, all the apostles, they didn't go, well, he's the head of the church. Yeah. You can't be so like that. They, because they went to the scriptures and said, is this so? Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, I, I stood with a young lady in uh, in a parking lot in Louisa, Kentucky. This yeah. has been, well, it has to be. Hey, shout out to Lawrence point. County, baby. Tyler, Chitter, Ch- Tyler Childers home, you know. Bulldogs. Oh, Louisa. Um, but I, I'm standing in the parking lot of a gas station one night after church, and I was talking to this young woman about faith and about God and sure. and. And I asked her, do you believe these things? Do you believe that Christ is the Son of God? Do you believe he died and rose from the yeah. grave? And she said, yes, I do. I said, then you're, you're a believer. Yeah. That's, that's all it says. If you believe these things, confess with your mouth, you're saved. Absolutely. She goes, I can't be saved. I can't be a Christian. I said, why not? Well, in true Christianity, everybody well, can be saved. She said, because my papa and my dad says I sin every day. I said, okay, now... People sin. We fall. We stumble. We have gra- perfect. We have grace. We're not robots. Back to that. But she says no. And this goes back to this <coughs> thing about me. checking out what people tell you. Yeah. There is you a scripture. Look into things, there's man. a scripture in the Bible that says a woman shall not usurp the things of a man. And that is so complicated. To, we can't do it in a in a day on this thing. Anyway, her her grandfather yeah. had told her that because she wore pants. That she was. You're not supposed to wear like certain cloth or cotton or something like that. Well, too. there's a passage old, that's about Old that. Testament. Okay, you're right. Stuff. You're, right you're, right, Testament you're Testament right. you're right. You're right. You're right. And I don't want to dismiss the Old Testament as being irrelevant, but the nature of this, fa- this, what this father and grandfather had done had basically, she believed them and their teachings so much mm-hmm. that she had convinced herself that grace wasn't for her. She had became a sheep at that point, and once you become a sheep, you never turn back, man. It's hard to get out of that situation if you are not. Opening your mind to other options about your life. What are you really doing? You know, you got to find your lane. You know, like you do. And like, here's me. I'm not. A, I'm not per se a Christian. You know, I, I believe what I believe. But here's the thing. I'm not going to knock nobody for what they believe. I'm going to encourage them to love harder and to be a better person and do everything they can that they want to do. Because that's what humans need to do. We need to work together. To work together, that's how we build. You know. Two quick, build. two quick things. Absolutely. Um, years ago, I was in summer school with a kid, and he called me. He goes, Mr. Step, do you need to yell at um, – I'll call him Joe. Yeah. You yell Joe here. Yeah. I said, why do I need to yell Joe? He doesn't believe in God. Okay. Hey, Joe? Yep. If I yell at you, will you believe in God? I don't think so. Sure won't. Uh, I, I don't think so. I said, okay. So yeah. I went back to my desk, and he said – the other guy goes, hey – Come here. What? Don't you believe in God? Yes. Well, don't you want him to believe in God? Yes. Well, why don't you yell? I said, uh, Joe. Because you're not I a yell, Roman. If I yell at you <laughs> and you won't believe in God, he goes, no. I said, have you ever rejected the idea of God? No. Do you, do you deny that there is a... God's real. Super, that God is real? Uh, no. I, I, that's fine. That's just never been a part of my life. Okay. So and the other guy goes... Wait a minute. I said, here's the thing. You want to get out of your reading assignment. That's all you want. Yeah. And you want Literally. me to yell him to give you something to do. Yeah. I said, stop it. Or I'm going to talk to you about how you read For real. And he's yeah. like, oh. Okay, now, second thing. You talk about uh, everybody's got something to do. Everybody has okay, something. Here's the thing. The fact is that the, the template in Scripture yeah. of Christ is as a shepherd. And when, a sh- when the sheep would wander off, yeah. they bring him back. Right, that's what the hook is for. Yeah. The shepherd's hook, rescue them, bring them back, put them in the flock. Flock yeah. teaches them to behave. But there's times when some of those sheep won't Persistent. stay with the flock. There's a second implement called the rod. And what you do, the shepherd would do, yeah. is, and I think you used a phrase one time when we were talking about get burned to learn. But right? yeah, you gotta you gotta get burned to learn. I feel well, like from a stove. You well, know? here's the, yeah, little kids like shiny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, well, here's the thing. The, the shepherd, if, sure. the, if the lamb would not stay with the flock, he would go rescue the lamb again. Yeah. Then using the rod, he would break the leg of the lamb. Wow. Now. That's crazy. Like, like, wait a minute. That's going to make him a victim. No. 
the shepherd then puts the lamb around his neck okay. and feeds him by hand. Oh my God, this is until that's crazy. Splits, I never knew that. Splints the leg. Yeah. Waits till it's well again. Sure. Then puts it back, and that lamb, that's crazy. because of the because of the pain, because yeah. this shepherd cared enough to go that far, that lamb never leaves that shepherd again. Absolutely. And uh, I got one last topic I'm going to get on before we wrap up. Um, Have we been it, on any topic? I don't think yet? we've done any topic. Okay. We're, we're just crazy people, you know, being <laughs> animated and such. Hashtag, I'm sorry. Uh, so I'm going to ask you, it goes along with what we're talking about. Cool. You say you are a man of faith. You are a you know Christian man. Mm -hmm. But do you believe in Darwin's theory? Okay, explain to me, when you say Darwin's theory, so, what do you mean? What I mean by that is, do you believe that we came from chimps? That's not what Darwin's theory said. Well, apes or primate-like creatures. No, that's like not what Darwin's, Darwin's theory is all about reproduction. It's not about... I thought now, that he was the one who created uh, the chain of hmm. beginning to end man. Darwin's theory, origin of species. Was that somebody else who created that? I don't know. It I'm might be. I'm talking it about might Darwin's be. theory. It might be. Darwin's theory is... Reproduction, origin of species come through adaptation. It's probably okay. the fittest. Now, right, right. And what does okay. fitness mean? Well, I mean, to be the fittest of all, I mean, you just you're the strongest. So nope. your genes would be the strongest, right? No, really, really wouldn't be the most powerful. Okay. Or I'm going to use my parents as an example. Sure. Okay. My mom and dad had seven children. That's crazy. That's a big number. That's a lot of people. Big number. We're not even Mormon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Hashtag sorry, S, uh, D, uh, S, uh, Church of Latter Day Saints, LDS. Shout out okay. to Utah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Internet goes everywhere. Dude, the Mormon faith um, is crazy, though. Crazy. No, well, I'm not getting into that. Oh, we're we not going to get into it. We don't have time for that. But now. it's just like crazy how it came about. Uh, anyway, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Little Johnny. Well, one, day, one day we will talk about that. <laughs> Next episode, so anyway, we'll talk about the Mormon faith. Probably not. Anyway, uh, my mom and dad had seven children. Yeah. Okay. Now, according to Darwin's theory, of natural selection, mm -hmm. their fitness was seven. Okay. Okay. And what that's based on is the number of offspring that make it to adulthood. Okay. Okay. I had a brother who died as a child, so now the number is six. All six of the remaining children made it to adulthood. We are now all in a position to procreate, to wow. replicate ourselves. Okay. Now. I had no children. Their number is five. Now, it's unlikely I'm ever going to have children, so I can go with five. <laughs> My brother, Ben, mm -hmm. he has married Sarah, who has two beautiful kids, but they're not his. Okay. The number is four. My sister, Kay, she and her husband have no children. Mm -hmm. My parents' number is three. Wow. Now, my sister, Patty, had three boys. Wow. So now their number is back to six. My brother. Okay, Jeff, see, I'm thinking of a different theory then. No, you're thinking you're thinking of with a common perception of the theory. Okay, yes, I'm thinking. Fitness. You're absolutely right. Fitness in Darwinian terms mm -hmm. is successful offspring so, to adulthood. Okay, so pretty much what he was thinking is like what he was saying was if you have seven uh, kids, you have a better chance. Is it pretty much as what? Yes. you know what I mean. If you like, have okay. seven offspring, I got you. They're going to have a better chance to completely wrong. I'm Wait, sorry. no, no, no. It's not completely wrong. <laughs> it's 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 like it's here's like, the theory, and yeah. there's the understanding. Yeah, absolutely. Because what you have here is if you have seven offspring. Yeah. Okay. Going back to your DNA More strength, than, right? Yeah. If I have if if there's seven of this gene pool, mm -hmm. and this gene pool has two. Yeah. There's three three times better chance these seven are going to make it. Good call. Okay? Yeah, that's what I was. That's what I was now, thinking. Now then, you know? then these seven mate with others that were also from strong genetic seven pools. kids or you know, seven more yeah, yeah, seven yeah, more yeah, yeah. and they keep going like my sister married a young man who came from a family that had four boys okay she had five brothers and sisters so that's big families making big families yeah okay so they keep going now the fitness then proceeds from that and the idea of adaptation is that the idea that Darwin said over time, mm -hmm. in based on the environment, they would have to adapt. Yeah. And I absolutely, you have to acknowledge that because 
in the beginning, there were no white people. It's funny. It's funny. <laughs> it's funny because like every other, not every other, but most scientists are like, sit back and like observe. You know, Darwin was just like, a bird? Boom! It just killed him. Here, let me see that. Well, he was Okay, the I see. I see. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, Audubon. He was a hands-on Aud- learner. Audubon did the it's same okay. thing. Audubon did the same thing. <laughs> They're like, the Audubon Society loves yeah. birds. He had to kill them. You're absolutely To find right. out how those but wings worked. I- let me rephrase what I'm saying then. Sure. Do you believe that we came from chimps? No. You don't believe that? No, because Neither they're still chimps. Neither do I. And here's, <laughs> here's what I'm going to say. I do believe we came from a hominoid or humanoid type creature. So a hominid, a, homin- ans- a common hominid ancestor. A homo erectus yeah, or whatever yeah. it was. I feel like at one point we have evolved. Evolution is inevitable. It's kind of like you, you can't like... Things change. will change. You might as well just say change. Is exactly. That's what I mean. But like evolution is change. Exactly. But like evolution is like, I feel like that is like undeniably real. But the evolution where we came from chimps is just dumb. Well, here's it's dumb to me. Again, this goes know? back. This goes back to my, my faith. Yeah. And that. And and this, again, goes to things that are above my pay grade. Of course. Um, oh, we're way in, in our head in, over in here, the, bro. In, we're just, in, we're in just the, monkeys ourselves. The know? Bible says in the beginning. God created them male and female, male and female created he them. Yeah. Okay. Then, and that's one accounting of creation. Yeah. And then there's a second accounting. Now, it doesn't deny the first accounting. It doesn't say there's two creations. Sure. But it's like if you and I watch the same event. We're going to see it differently. I would, I would report it one it way. You would report it yeah, differently. That's how it goes. But they're both in the book of Genesis. Yes. And in one case, then you have the story where men, a man is created first. And then God does the first surgery, yeah. puts him to sleep, takes a rib out, creates woman. Wow. Um, because he, she was not taken off the bone of his head, like the Greek stories of uh, the birth of uh, Venus. Yeah. They, she's not to rule over man, not from his feet to be stepped on, but from his side, where she could be his companion. Right on. And so that's where the, the, the value... Great morality. The value of love sure. of a, a united family. Absolutely. The first marriage, first surgery, and he closed him up. And, of course, then comes the my favorite part, mm-hmm. the, the funniest part of the whole Bible. So Genesis is the beginning, Revelations is the end, yep. right? Okay. Yep. The Revelation. Just so I'm right. Yeah, yeah the yeah. Revelation. Yeah, Sorry. but here's, here's – and, and I know we, we've run way longer than your normal uh, – Oh, baby, this is the yeah. record right here. For the record, Guinness Book of World Records, longest podcast <laughs> – that's why I came. To believe that. I Together, came. FTR, baby. Uh-huh. We're having a great time, so, man. So, anyway, in the in the Bible, uh, it says, and in, 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 in God came walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Mm-hmm. So, here's God yeah. walking in the garden. And he says, Adam, where are you? Which is a hilarious thing for God to ask. Because he's God. He knows exactly where Now, here's where the he's thing. At, you you have children. Yes. You know, if you hear a sound in the kitchen, you might ask, what you doing? Yeah, but I know. And they're, and they're going to lie. Nothing. I'm not doing nothing. I'm, not, I'm doing nothing. It was Bubby. What was that sound? Yeah. I don't know. Because <laughs> children, children know two sentences. Yeah. I know. And I don't know. That's Those exactly two sentences. how it goes. Those so, are the two. So God says, where are you? And Adam says, I'm hiding. Yeah. Because this is after he's taken the fruit and they, sure. they the, the, you know, the realization was that they were naked. That wow. was it. It wasn't. And the thing is, if you, if you believe in redemption, that God can forgive sin, yeah. all Adam had to do was, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> because Adam, God didn't tell Eve not to eat the fruit. He told Adam. Wow. People want to blame women for stuff. She wasn't told. Adam made up a whole bunch of rules for her. Really? Yeah. That's you can read read the read in Genesis. I didn't he goes, know that. See, God says you can do everything. It's pretty to look at. Just don't eat it. Hmm. Adam goes, don't touch it. Don't look at it. Don't be near it. He basically became a church. Putting <laughs> put, you know, yeah. man's, man's rules put, putting, on something. Yeah, put putting, rules a, on it. putting a label or putting a vibe on it. I yeah, guess you could yeah. say. You, you know, put that making it seem putting more it weird. Than it was. Yeah. So anyway, she did take the fruit. And she gave it to him. Now, he could have said, no, we shouldn't have eaten this. Mm-hmm. But he did. Temptation. Okay, I get it. He, you know, there's an old gospel song that says he fell in love because he fell because he loved her. I get that. That's fine. But then God comes and goes, where are you? He mm-hmm. goes, I'm hiding. 
why are you hiding? Mm-hmm. Again, God is being real patient. Yeah. And Adam goes, because I'm naked. <laughs> <laughs> and then God says the funniest thing. Who told you you were naked? <laughs> and he does what men have done since the beginning of time. Lie. It's her fault. Ooh. She did it. And you gave yeah. her to me, so basically this comes back to you. Ooh. And Yikes. how many times do we have stuff go on and people go, if God loved me, yeah. this never would have happened. Yeah, it's pretty Wait crazy, Wait a minute. Man. Not if. It's not if. God loves. Therefore, God loves. Period. This now, what happens to us is very often a combination Choices. of things we've chosen. Yeah. And and and, and I, I said this. A I have a dear friend. I have a dear a friend who's uh, just had his last chemo treatment. And the other day, getting ready to go for surgery at Cleveland Clinic. Wow. Um, Pastor Rick May, watch. Good energy. Watch what happens. Those now who pray, pray for our friends. Here's, here's the thing. Um, when he got sick, when he was diagnosed, I'll put it that way. Uh, when he was diagnosed. Um, one of the things we talked about was that this is a part of the path. Yeah. Now, there's somebody along this path that either has to meet him or he has to meet. Very true. And it may be, and you know, it may be a parking lot attendant. This is true. It may be somebody at a restaurant while he's driving to Cleveland. Yeah. He had to go through all this chemo, all this stuff down here in, in over at the, the, Cancer Center here at yeah. KDMC. He had to go through all that, and maybe it's been down there. Maybe someone's yeah. watching his faith. Maybe they're watching this six foot four inch man who is has been strong his whole life, mm-hmm. running a mule team to, to to work his farm in Lawrence County, pastoring and preaching hours and days and studying. They're seeing him now be brought into a place a vulnerable of, of state. Vulnerable, vulnerable, vulnerability. Vulnerability. Yeah. And now, what's he going to do? How are we going to respond to that? And his path is down this way. Now, nobody knows Mm -hmm. what path is going to take us out of this world. Yeah. But given our faith, we know the destination. And um, and I'll use this last example, and then I'll shut up. When you were little, little, did you ever fall asleep in the back of the car? Of course. When your dad was driving? Yeah. I Why? do it now. Still, how, I fake how, it just so my friends how, will carry me in. How, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were talking about a story I told yeah, in class one time. This is how I anyway, roll. <laughs> but what is how? How when you're little, you didn't know where you were going. Mm-mm. You didn't know how cars work. No sense of time. You didn't. You were you were in the car. You fell asleep. How could you be so peaceful? How was it? How is it that? You had no answers. Like I said, it's like before you realize time. I feel like time changes. It puts a damper on a lot of your things. You know what I mean? Here's the thing. God created life. Man created time. Fair enough. I will agree There's with that. There's a reason that. why I have one of these. I got a Fitbit, baby. No, here's the thing. I'm rocking it. The time thing is so I can know how long I have till the next thing I have to do. Yep. Why don't I just do it? You know, in the Dang. summertime, sometimes I never wear a watch. Really? When I'm getting ready to go back to school, I've got to start get, getting on a routine yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, getting the schedule. But see, I lose track of the days in the summertime. And also, before we go any further, uh, you pretty psyched about this year, man? Very excited. Are you in a new room? Uh, well, Are you in the same room as last well, year? Well, I'm in the same room as last year, but it's nowhere. It's not where you knew me. Oh, you're in Building 6. Lambert am, told I'm me. Up, I'm in 608. Yeah, he, he's, yeah, he's in 6, too. Yeah. Yeah, he said well, that you were in 6 because when I had you, it was Building 2. Yeah, I was he down there and... Two. Well, and that's the thing. I was I was down there in the eighteen first eighteen years I was at Blazer. I was in five rooms in Building Two. Dude, moved yeah, all that, the, way down. I, I, the reason I was asking is I feel like you move rooms every year. Like they just well, throw you around. No, man. It, it's, and there's never been a throwing around. It's always been a uh, as a result of a conversation that we had to have. Right and on. and you know I've always had a good good administration there at the sure, school to yeah. give me. They they come say hey here's what we want to do yeah matter of fact the reason I moved to Building Six mm-hmm. was that the foreign language department was kind of spread out and they had a new young teacher and I said well the department chair is Mr. Atkins and he's up in six yeah would it be better for him to be in two see that's what I was about to say because it used to Pardon be me. it used to be uh, there was some history and three history and science pretty much mm-hmm. and a couple math. 
mm-hmm. and then it was it was completely different, you know. Well, like, math, math and science in three. Yeah. History and business in six. Yeah. English and some foreign language. And that's how it goes. So like, uh, I just feel like you moved rooms so much, man. Like I really. I, do. I have no complaints. Janie Maudlin's that's moved awesome. a lot more than me. Really. She has been everywhere, that's and now crazy. they've got her in the well, Millennium Center. Oh really? So she's she's got the theater she as her classroom. That's yeah. awesome. Heck yeah. It is, but you have nowhere to store stuff now. This is true. So, this is true. but it's a it's a it's a really great. We got a great year coming up. Awesome. Um, and, and it's really picked it's really, up. I mean, you already got your roster. It's and everything. really unfair. Yeah. It's really unfair. I get the best kids on the hill every year. That's awesome. Uh, it's unfair to all the rest of them because they've always fighting for second best. So the scraps. you're only doing English four. Yeah, right. so yeah that's seniors three, only. three sections of seniors. Got a okay. yearbook nice. and a brand new class called Bible as Literature. Sweet, that's and gonna be awesome, it's, man. It's one of the things that I'm we, glad that you're teaching it too. That's, that's well, great. is the, there any other teachers that are teaching that no, class as just, well? Just one section. Nice. But we're tr- I'm trying to be very. It is an elective, cool. and I've got uh, a wide range. Got all four grades in it. Nice. But what's going to be what's cool is that I was taking pictures of textbooks. Mm-hmm. I started to tell you about this before we went on the air. Yeah. That and I would send them to my principal, and I said, "What does this look like?" And he said, that looks like a Sunday school textbook. Yeah, I said, it does. And so we took another one. What was that? It looks like a Sunday school textbook. That's right. Yeah. Because some people, and I, and I mean this with all respect. Of course. Some people hashtag think. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't hashtag. I'm because, never sorry. But the, the idea is that some no people regrets. think that if you get the Bible in there, then you can teach a Sunday school lesson during I don't think that's English how it's going to work. Well, no, not in my class because yeah. we're taking the Bible as literature. So we're looking at the strategies that those writers took to do the things they do. Because cool. I don't have to prove, and the Bible's true to anybody, because the truth is the truth. People, bl- people either have faith or they don't. That's just how it is. Well, you here's know. the thing. I believe everybody has faith. But there's a point where they have to say, I have to give up. I have to believe what I've been told with the evidence I'm presented but I don't want to do that because I feel like I'd have to give stuff up and I won't be able to make my own decisions. Fair enough. Guess what? I've, I've, accepted, Christ. I've accepted Christ in 1994. Nice. Okay? I've made every decision I've made since then. Exactly. I don't have a voice come in my head yeah. go, You're still and in now control. turn left at the corner, <laughs> Kevin. Yes, Drive Lord. Drive off the bridge, yes. Kevin. Yes, Lord. Yeah. I I'll shall do, do these. No, I, I, I don't get that. I mean, I, I've had very I have wonderful emotional experiences, and I've had great yeah. spiritual experiences where, you know, I know exactly what God wants me to do. And there's other times awesome. when it's more like, Jesus, take the let's, see, let's see how you're doing, Bob. Yeah. Let's see how you're doing. And I'm like, okay. And you get through that. That's but awesome. um, let me tell you something. Um, oh, I had a question, and I've forgotten it all this time. Bring it on, baby. Okay. Let's hear it. Where did Nugs B come from? Oh, gosh, I can't talk about this. Okay. Uh, I can't, Hashtag, I can't, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hashtag, you, together for t- the re- I will tell you off record. air. I'll okay. tell you off air. Okay. And here's the thing. I can talk about it, but it's just kind of it's kind of inappropriate. Okay, you know, okay. So. It'll be on the After Dark episode. Yeah, it'll be on the After Dark episode. <laughs> okay, here's the thing, though. I will thing, tell though. you all where Nugs B came at, from. At it the stemmed. real Nugs B. At the real Nugs B, okay. It are stemmed. you the real Nugs B or are you just Nugs B? Uh, here's the thing, okay? I did the real Nugs B. This is the God's honest truth. Right. Uh, simply because, like, on social media, right, I, right, right. I, I like to have a tag sure. where you can find me where right. nobody else will have it. More parts it, to it's, it. it. It's specific. Mm-hmm. You right. know what I mean? Exactly. The real Nugs B. Right. Nobody else is the real Nugs B besides no. me. So, like, because I know you took it from the president. That was weird. <laughs> the real Donald Trump. The real Trump. Obama. <laughs> the real <laughs> Donald Trump. Is. No, but anyways, so, like, uh, what I was getting at is, like, so. It actually didn't start as Nugs B. It started as Nugs. That was that was my nickname. I, I got that when I was I a re- kid. I remember you telling yes. me that, that I got was it when I was a kid. Yes. I was probably like five or six years old. And like I said, I'll explain a little bit more. But then it went to Nugs Bunny. Not to you, though. Not to you all until the After Dark <laughs> episode. Um, but anyway, so it went to Nugs Bunny, Nugzilla, uh, okay. Nugsy Bugs. Uh, okay. A, a, a lot of nugs, you know, nice, and then nice. like nugs you know, and bugs. N- nugs not drugs. Big, nugs, big, sh- big you know? shout out yeah, to the smallest yeah, player exactly. ever. Nice so job. you know, um, and I got those. Shout out to Jose Aretta. That's my guy. Uh-huh. One of my brothers. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, great dear friends. Right. Uh, he's actually the one that gave me Nugs Bunny. Okay. Uh, and Nugzilla, Nugsy Bugs, yada yada. We were hanging out, but mm-hmm. anyways. 
that's it stemmed from Nugs. Then it went to Nugs B because I just felt like Nugs Bunny was just kind of childish, right? You know, and okay. like I'm not okay. put like, away childish things. Yeah, I'm like, man I, now. Yeah, I'm a grown man, and like I feel like I shouldn't be calling myself Nugs Bunny. You right, know, like right. I mean, Nugs B just sounds more hey, adult. Even Lil you know? Romeo had to drop some <laughs> Lil on there, man. <laughs> Lil Wayne, young will MC, be Lil young Wayne. MCs getting old, yeah. dude. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I, I'll tell you off air what it is, man. But the, I do have a problem with Childish Gambino because he's oh, a full grown him. man. God, I love he's him, a full grown man. Oh no, um, I get it. I love his stuff. He's great. Man. And Donald Glover is an Donald amazing Glover. talent. But. Oh, dude, super. Have you watched Atlanta? The, the I have not. I've just not taken the time to look at it. Him and his brother, like he actually, his brother actually directs a couple of the episodes and uh-huh. produces. So he, like he lets his brother do it. Super, super cool, man. Keep it the family. I thought it was. Super, guys, I thought that was toss, awesome. Toss the brother a little yeah, cash. Yeah, you know, a little bread. You know. This, um, I'll let you direct. But I'm going to end this episode with two things, okay? okay. So two things. First this of all. This is the end. This, we promise. <laughs> I want you to You've check You've been out. very, very faithful to stay with us <laughs> this long. Thank you all so much. Seriously, Ser- I can't thank you all enough. Honestly, enough. honestly, I, I didn't. I didn't mean to overstay my welcome. You didn't. But I please everyone. You are very Either by arriving or by leaving. So <laughs> everyone's happy one way or the other. So, two things I'm going to say. And I don't know. Okay. You might have already watched The 100. You ever heard of it? I've heard of it, not watched it. Oh, please start watching it. You will love it. Okay. I'm telling you. It's a, uh, um, uh, CBS, I think. It, uh, it's cable mm-hmm. TV. Mm-hmm. So, it's kind of cheesy sometimes. But, but it's dude, uh, science it's fiction. Good. Science fiction, uh-huh. thriller. Mm-hmm. Uh, s- summary is like radiation happens on the Earth. Boom. They have to go up into space for 97 years. Then uh, it becomes ooh. inhabitable in space, so they have to come back down. In space, if you do something of the age of 18 and you break a law, they kill you. They don't care. You're wasting resources. If you're under the age of 18— I have proposed that system here for years. Let's do it. All crimes are punishable by death. God, that'd be crazy. Nobody would commit crimes. die. Dead. Litter, you (laughs) die. But uh, so anyways— Murder somebody, well, die, of course. Yeah, yeah, you're obviously dead. But But like uh, uh, under 18, they're juveniles, so they get sent to lockup until they're 18 to get reviewed, okay? (laughs) So they send 100 of the juveniles down to Earth, like pretty much on a like, eh, they might live. We'll see. And if they do, it's a bonus, you know? Yeah, because— And if we don't, then, well, we just took some of the population off. We can save water. It's a vision quest. Yeah, this this is a quest, (laughs) you know? Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna end it with that. Okay, one telling minute. everybody to watch one that. Minute. And okay. the last thing I'm gonna say is the Social Leap by William von Hoppel, okay. a uh, psychologist. I think he's from New York, maybe or whatever. Read the summary of that. It's it it, it kind of goes. It doesn't go against Christianity, mm-hmm. but it has some things to do with evolution. Like we were talking about how like okay. maybe you know evolution is inevitable, whatever you know. Right. But check the summary of that. Who haven't you know those out there who haven't checked it out or anything. Give it a just a quick read on the summary. See if you'd be interested because it is a very interesting read. Let, let me give you three reading records. Absolutely, let's go. Okay, the people are ready. One, Stephen Freer's Freakonomics. Sounds great. Great, great book. It's an, older book or newer? An older. Okay. Older. He's an econo- He's an economist, and he addresses everything from. I'm not going to lie. I probably going to watch the audio book because I'm lazy. It's fine. But I'm still going to check it out. It's fine. Freakonomics. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. It's very short chapters, very yeah. easily digestible. Read it in a couple sittings. Yeah. Uh, Freakonomics by Stephen Frears. Uh, secondly, um, oh, gosh, what was the other one? Freakonomics by Stephen Frears. Dang it. I had three. I'll oh, we'll see for the other one. Uh, Reckless Love by a man named Francis Chan. Nice. Uh, it's a it's a book of faith, but it's basically talking about the love of God and how He's coming. He this is how he how desperately he wants a relationship. Nice. Um, and the third book I was going to recommend. Dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. Well, I guess I have to remember it for next time. Well, I keep there, there will. If you're if you thought the rest of this was bad, sitting here watching me try to think of a book title. <laughs> You you know you I, should go paint something, look, and watch it dry. The last episode, uh, my buddy Joel and I did. I literally, my cheeks hurt. My cheeks hurt again this time from laughing so much. It's been such a great and time. And it's not his Thank face. Thank you so much for coming, man. It's this not is, his this face. Has been awesome. He's Give been here. Some, he's been that chair so baby. long. His it's been great. Hurt. It's been great, man. It's been great. I really appreciate you. I really appreciate, appreciate you coming man. on. It's been an hey, honor having you, some, you. You're a grinder, buddy. You're out there doing every day. I appreciate it. And and I've got I've got a real blessing in the sense that and I say this all the time to my students, you know. Uh, once a step kid, 
Always a step, Always a step kid. kid, my friend. Always. And, uh, and, and I'm very proud of the fact that I've got people out there doing everything. Every day. I ran into a, one of my former students yesterday at, at uh, the Blitz. She's working with the U.S. Army in nice. Montgomery, Alabama. That's awesome. She, international training. She, and I got another one that's a, a crew chief on a Gulf Stream for the Air Force. Yeah. And you guys, you know, you're out here doing everything every day, doing yeah. it the right way, raising your kids. I appreciate being it. Being responsible, man. It means a lot to me. You, uh, you, you make me proud. Thank you so yeah. much. I really appreciate it. Once again, guys, this is episode 32. For the record, hashtag together FTR. Make sure to go to YouTube and subscribe. <laughs> Make sure to go to YouTube and subscribe. Hit the West bell. Wood. <laughs> the wood, baby. <laughs> uh, Fear of the wood. <laughs> uh, but yeah, make sure to go to YouTube, subscribe. Also go to www.togetherftr.com and check out the episodes. Maybe buy some merch. Hit us up. Let us know, guys. I really appreciate it. Once again, it's been a pleasure having you, my friend. Good to see you, Thank you so much. God bless.